having people say on the YouTube stream that, oh, you're cutting out. Like your sentences are either being cut off or the mic's not opening. They say you're, they call it you're choppy because they don't hear the audio, whether it's at the end of what I'm saying or at the beginning of what I'm saying. But either way, the settings for the noise gate aren't right. You're not talking. You're on mute or something. Yeah, that's the, the gate is, that's definitely what happens. By the way, we're live. Hey, everybody. Hey, what's happening? Welcome to uh, Rocco's Secret Interventions uh, Linux Spotlight interview. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the case. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. But it would be fun if it was, and this is probably how we're going to have to do it eventually. So. Marketing yeah, sucker him into showing up. Yeah, exactly. Hey, Rocco, come on. We'll help you fix your computer. Right, right. It'll go just like that. Like, speaking of computers, what was the first one you used? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when did you first hear about Linux, yeah. Rocco? We'll just That's piece funny. it together over a series of streams. It'll... Actually, no actually, through the Linux Spotlight, if you notice every once in a while, I get dragged into answering one or two of those questions. So, yeah, probably if you watched them all, you probably get my whole story anyway. So, so uh, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna download all of them and make like a <laughs> super cut of all of Rocco's answers. Yeah, uh, uh, I love it. I love it. And All right, well, welcome everybody more. to just us joking around, and maybe we'll talk about Linux, who knows. Hey, Nate, how's it going? <laughs> Nate. Great. Can you hear me? You can. I can. Can you? No, you sound good. Okay. It's positive. It is. It's always positive. Things are good. Good. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, I know you had I a see that. super busy weekend, and you're trying to get rested up. It's I never going to happen. I need you fresh for the next recording. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So uh, folks on the chat, I'm guessing we sound okay, but just let us know. Hey, and look, I left the Eric and the Surge Explains LibreOffice Calc on the stream thing. I am such a professional. <laughs> such you a know professional. how many times I've done that? <laughs> At least I noticed this time. Magically, I'm going to fix it. Ta-da. Oh my goodness. Don't worry about the man behind the curtain. Yeah, just don't, don't, don't. This is all professionally done. I got a whole team that's in another room over there. <laughs> it's yep. No expense spared. Right. Oh, my goodness. So, gentlemen, what is going on this fine week? The weather's well, changing. Everybody's freezing, right? Well, it's, it's not. I mean, the weather's been okay here. Like, if it's been like five or six fine uh, but it's going to be like 60 right so nice good stuff i'm excited oh. because it means i can hang up my christmas lights without falling off the roof this time so i'm really there excited you go. About that. <laughs> small favors right yeah is this is this the weekend you're going to put them up nate well i've already started but this is the weekend i'm going to hang all the um the real fancy things so uh my my primary lights as i like to call them Nate has Nate. Tell us about your plans for these lights because this is the nexus of 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 hardware Nate and software Nate and you know taking things to the nth degree Nate. Let's hear it. All right, I'm sure that you have seen the lights that you know, like they're highly customizable, programmable, and they do like music kind of light shows. Have you seen those? I'm not doing that. What I am doing is I am. I'm taking the same base uh, architecture, as it were, single board computers, and I'm going to have lights that are somewhat permanent on my house. I mean, they can be removed, but fixed on the house so that through all the seasons throughout the year, I can make my house whatever color I want. So like right now, it'll be multicolor. Christmas. Well, not yet because it's still Thanksgiving time, so I'm not going to kick Christmas over until so orange, orange kind of fall colors right now. And then I'll do like multicolor for Christmas, then shades of blue for like winter, you know, January, the post Christmas time, you know, when, when it's sad and dark and, and there's really nothing to celebrate in January. And then uh, February, I'll make my house pink for Valentine's Day, then green for St. Patrick's Day, and, um, you know, kind of pastels for Easter, red, white, and blue for Memorial Day, and, and so on. And, and then probably like throughout the summer, I'm, I'm just going to do like every third or fourth light will be lit up and just have it. Kind of dim, just just 
so there's some sort of ambient light. And then maybe have it spin around for UFO month. I don't know. I'm, I haven't figured that part out. So what is it that's letting you do all of this? It's a, it's a beagle bone. I'm using Falcon Pi Player FPP. It used to be for the Raspberry Pi only, but now it's for the beagle. Beagle bone has kind of taken a lot of the, what they mostly develop against. And so I have these like hats, I guess you want to call it, to sit on top that break everything out. So I bought a thousand lights that I'm going to hook into that. And then I'm going to use all my old, like regular traditional lights. That's going to go into like another, like a, <clears throat> Uh, like for lack of a better term, like a daughter board that will have will power all the AC lights or whatever I want. So I could do, you know, bubble machine, smoke machine if I really wanted, but I'm not going to go that crazy yet. I like that. You're going to be that house eventually that everybody comes to drive by at, at the holidays. Uh, it already is actually. So I'm just taking it one step oh, further this year. There you go. I even, so, so even brought cookies by last year saying thank you for the lights. <laughs> I enjoyed it as my walk to work every, every day. So, uh, fantastic. I saved the notes on my fridge. So what do you, you got like parameters that you can put in the speed, the color, the, like the pattern and all that kind of stuff or whatever you can dream up, you can do pretty really? much. Yeah. And is it powered a, by Linux. I assume so. Is this, <laughs> is this a UI type thing or are you doing this through a command line or uh, it's config called file? X lights. It, it's a, uh, it's a cross platform application. I believe it's cute based based. Yeah. You know, Cause that's, why would you build anything and anything, anything other than cute, right? Um, I mean, if you you know going to have an actual user base anyway. Yeah, but okay, never mind. Um, but yeah, so it works in Windows, Mac. Real subtle, um, nice, smooth, <laughs> smooth. Kind of that was slipped smooth. it in there, man. <laughs> so, and you can download it for anything. It's an app image. I'm just going to run the app image, X lights, and I can I set up the each of the brands basically uh, that have uh, each channel can basically take seven, 750 lights or so. I'm going to do two channels of 500 and then I'm going to do several channels. I, I haven't got it all mapped out yet of all the rest of the lights. I'm not going to do like obnoxious, like bright, you know, Hey, look at me, just kind of subtle, just shift things around and then turn on and off automatically. Next year we'll go for crazy. Well, you know, I, I honestly think this is a good opportunity for maybe uh, the crossover of the holiday season lighting. Everybody, you know, there's a huge audience for that, right? And then the home project of a Raspberry Pi and then Linux. And maybe there's yep. some, uh, some things you could put out there about this, Nate. It's, it's an amalgamation. <laughs> it's, like a, it's like a sandwich or maybe, like, maybe a stew of all the different crazy hobbies that I have and all itself at once that could eventually tie it into like uh smart home stuff too you know like when i when i pull up on my you know phone or whatever it connects to the network it can like you know sit the house can celebrate or something i don't know something <laughs> like that. he's home yay that would be fun actually fantastic all right cool mr adam john euler is my spirit <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love it. Sort of He's a, not a reverse one. heckling. Yeah. <laughs> How are you, sir? I'm all right, man. I'm uh I'm hanging in there. Pretty pretty stressed at work, but almost I got a week off next week, so Three more days, man. Three more days. Um, and then good stuff. Uh just been trying to tie up some hands before the holiday and So you were... it goes. You were telling me about trying to get Ansible and stuff running on the, that Mac that you were using. Any any luck uh, getting your DevOps no, stuff going? No, yeah? it's incredibly dumb. There's 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 no reason for it, but it's just like, hey, you know, this, this is happening. So, um, I increased the Max file descriptors. I increased the Max files. I I figure maybe as the out of memory killer that was causing the problem, but memory never even got up. I have no idea what's causing it. Probably some crazy security thing they did in Catalina to make life hard. Uh, yeah, it's frustrating, but that's what the that's what the Linux VMs for, right? I guess so. Yeah, I, I made the joke to you about the uh, Mac subsystem for Linux. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? Um, yeah, I I I may have may have. There's no proof of this. I may have tried out Catalina in a uh, virtual machine, and um, 
I mean, it's, pictures. No, it didn't happen. There's a EULA that I didn't agree to and didn't install. And none of this happened. It's all theoretical. Um, but I mean, it's, it's Mac. It's, it's lovely. It's polished. I mean, um, their terminal is really something I, I don't understand why it's, I mean, I'm, it's obviously, no uses it. is that no it? Uses, yeah. Everybody uses iTerm. Okay. Nobody uses terminal dot app. Terminal dot app is like somehow worse than X term. <laughs> yeah. Just it's, like nobody uses the text editor or whatever. What is it? Uh, uh, te uh, yeah, text edit. Yeah, text edit. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, you know, expected to be a text editor, and then it's like, oh, this is it defaults <laughs> to like rich text format. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, okay. Yeah, so no, anyway, besides that, stuff, no one uses. Yeah. Well, it was funny because I, I I used to love the doc, and I had to say that I was a little, um. I don't know. There was, it didn't have the flexibility that I guess I remembered it having. And um, anyway, I mean, a very minor commentary, but it's, you know, it's lovely. It's Mac OS. It, so anyway. Um, Rocco. Yes. How's Pulse Audio uh, treating you? Uh, Pulse Audio is Pulse Audio. It always yeah. is and always will be an issue. But I mean, I'm not having major sound issues. I'm just having maybe lack of knowledge for audio. Well, we will be happy to. Uh, I mean, so Nate recently started using Pulse Effects, mm -hmm. and he's had great success with it, with uh, cutting out just sort of all of the background. You see, he has about 300 computers running around him right now. Yep. And there's a little bit of fan noise in the background. In the Bat Cave. Yeah. Yeah. And then in the super cubicle. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, or the tech dungeon. I mean, there's so many different ways you can go with that. Um, but so anyway, he's, he did the uh, gate in Pulse Effects, and it's made a huge difference in uh, just editing the recordings and the stuff we've been doing with DLN Extend. Oh, by the way. Hmm? Hmm? By the way, oh. I finished the episode today. Did you? Very good. Thank Which you. Which one? Um, the latest one with, um, were you talking about, what were you talking about? We don't remember. I don't remember. I just, walked, <laughs> yeah, I just listened to it today. Yeah, exactly. I, haven't I haven't listened to it yet. So don't, no spoilers. You listen to your stuff. I, I haven't listened to it. Well, yeah. I, I mean, like to make sure, but, you know, I don't sound too stupid. Oh. You know. <laughs> I don't. Okay. All right. Dig Almost it. made it. Okay. Almost. <laughs> now we've been, we've been having fun doing that, but yeah, at first, um, it was tough because, uh, Nate didn't have any kind of gate on his microphone. And so there was just all this fan noise and, and it was just a constant open mic, right? There was no cutout. And right. that's what a gate's going to give you is that at some point, if you're not making enough noise, it just stops. So there was a lot of editing to just sort of clean out that white noise. And then of course now it's winter. So Nate's furnace is kicking on. <laughs> <laughs> so now he, he has to shut off his furnace when we record <laughs> <laughs> One time I forgot to turn it back on. That was fun. Next morning, like, what is wrong? Oh, furnace is oh, off. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. yeah, so I have an interview Friday, and it's going to be you know up to 60, which means in this room it's going to be about 85. Mm -hmm. So And, of course, I don't want no fans on in the room, and there, so it's going to be fun. Yeah, yeah. Well, so for the gate, I mean – if you use kind of the default settings that are in, let me see what Pulse Effects. I haven't checked the default settings in Pulse Effects, but defaults in OBS is what I'm using now. They, they don't take care of it. So the, the key that I've found, at least on the gate, is um, the threshold itself, obviously, um, which. The so the default that you get in Pulse Effects is not what you want. Um, the attack and the so the threshold is fine at 40 for me at least on this microphone. Now, this is a, a dynamic microphone versus a condenser microphone. So, your microphone is going to pick up a little more background noise, and you might need to change that 40 down a little bit. 
or up a little bit. Um, it's gonna you're gonna have to play with it just a little bit to see right where that is. Um, the ratio, I leave it to. Some people say to bump it all the way up to four, but I think that's too much because then it's you're you're clipping even more of the S's and F's, and that's what's happening to you, right? Like you're. Yep. Yeah. So, but the attack and the release are really the key sort of thing there for me. By default, at 100 on attack and 150 milliseconds on release, that's way too high. So I go to 10 on the attack and 50 on the release. Uh, gain reduction, negative 24. Threshold, not for me, 40. Ratio 2. Um, knees, I just leave it at 9. And then I do put makeup gain on mine because the dynamic mic just inherently is a quieter mic than a condenser. So you may not need to, but I put five decibels of makeup gain in there. Um, and that's, so that's the setting I've been using. I think Nate, that's pretty close to what you've been using. Those are the settings I gave him and he's using a condenser mic and it seems to work okay. Um, right, so what do you have your release at? 50. I mean, you can only polish a turd so much. I mean, it's still a turd in the end. So <laughs> thanks, Nate. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, and the threshold you said? Uh, I have it at forty on mine, but again, you may need to play with that. So uh, if you have it too low, it will clip more. Yeah. Well, I have it. Okay, so I have it set at on OBS. I have it. At, thought it was better at forty-five. Mm. Um, I mean, the key that the, you're not trying to really because you're in a quiet room. It's not like there's a ton of noise around you. A gate for you is just cutting out fan noise, keyboard noise, mouse clicks, you know, just sort of the the light noise that's around you. Um, and that's f mostly for my situation. It's the same way. I don't have a ton of background noise, but I like that it closes off so that if I am moving around then it's not going to just pick up all kinds of different sound. And I also think it just, it, 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 it does a good job for breathing. Yeah. So if I, if I'm, you know, um, taking breaths and stuff like that, it, it does a good job of clipping that out. So it just, it's a much cleaner sound with a gate on it. Now I don't use the noise gate in OBS. I use the expander because the expander is actually the equivalent of the gate in pulse effects. You have the same settings. So I used to use four, five, four or five different filters, including the expander, but I was having so many issues, audio not sounding right and everything, that I just took it down to the gate and um, the limiter. Okay. See, I don't do the limiter, and I also, I had been using a condenser, but that was, it, it compressed my audio so much that it was really weak sounding. Um, so now I just use the expander in OBS and then the gate in pulse effects. That's the only thing I use. I tried watching all kinds of YouTube videos. And oh, it's, it's impossible. I mean, it's impossible to get the right settings, but one it thing is. that, you know, I kept hearing over and over again about the limiter that you should have a limiter just for the sole fact of not, a, it does, it basically doesn't allow your audio to go over that certain level that you set. So you're not mm. going to be clipping because it's not going to allow that. Got it. That was like supposed to be a really important thing. I mean, if I guess if you're not clipping already, it's fine, but it's possible. It's possible. So does this take, like I just said it in, in, um, false effects that's takes right away. I mean, or do I need to, well, restart so, or so what? check, check your, so above your filters there, it says applications. Yeah. You, you want to click on that and then make sure that it sees an application is open and then so, you want you want to make sure that that's on now under the settings, which is the little triple bar kind of icon next to the minimize button, uh, in there under general, I have it. So it, by default, it has process all outputs, which is pointless to me. I don't need that. So I shut that off and I turn on process all inputs, which works for everything except zoom. Zoom refuses to be automatically selected. So when you start <laughs> zoom surprise, yeah, I know. You have to you have to turn it on, but once it's on, it's on and it's fine. Um, so it took me a while to come to terms and really to get Pulse Effects working right. But now that I've been using it, I it, it works perfectly. It's fantastic. If you use the flat pack version, don't don't use the natively installed one because then you have to get all the filters and 
plugins and it's just it's a mess to get all that installed because it doesn't do it by default none of your filters are work you have to go figure out which ones which libraries you need it, it's it's a mess the flat packs is completely self-contained it just works perfectly out of the box so all right dig it cool all right we'll just play around with that i mean if you have any questions over the next couple of days or whatever just let me know but maybe you can uh, send me in telegram <laughs> just yeah the just yeah, the I'll noise just, gate ones. And I'll just take the screenshot of it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I can do that. I have the, I use Linux. I can do anything. Right. Exactly. Oh, we have so many fine folks in chat. Steve is here. Carl, Ali, Ski Meister, John, Linux City, Ansem. Jeez, we got a whole bunch of people. Tony, Tony, what are you doing up? What time is it over there? Tony's always maybe up. he works the midnight shift. Tony just he's a champion. Ali too, yeah, actually, Ali, it's late over there as well. You guys. So, <laughs> I talked about this a little bit on my uh, last stream, but I had I'm certainly not suffering, but I had. Uh, internet 50 uh 50 megabytes megabits down and 50 up so a, a fios uh, fiber connection and i was unhappy because new customers were getting three times that speed actually five times so they're getting 250 as the starter uh speed for a third of what i was paying and i kept calling and saying this is so unfair why you know why can't i get a a break on that and they're like well that's for new customers only you know and i did my stomp my feet and i'm gonna leave and they're like sorry there's nothing we can do and you know so finally uh last week i got some the right person on the phone right and um was able to get 500 down 500 up for the same price so basically you know i'm happy paying that because now at least i feel like i'm getting my money's worth and i have to say <laughs> Downloading stuff is silly now because that 10 times speed difference, I mean, it's, I, so someone mentioned pop OS earlier and I thought, Hey, I haven't tried the new one yet. I'll download it. It took one minute to, to download. Yep. <laughs> I'm just like, okay. Yeah. That's nice. So the distro hopper's dream. I'm telling you. Oh, uh, or it's nightmare. Bad. Yeah. Or nightmare, depending on <laughs> how you look at it. All yeah. over. Yeah. Well, I got a one gig connection, so I'm with you, brother. It's very nice. Is that fiber or uh, cable? It's, it's Comcast. Oh, my goodness. Same here. You, you poor what man. I have. Comcast. Which means. But I don't have that kind of speed. Which means that it's never always going to be one. Because <laughs> it's always going to be something lower. Up or, to. Yeah, up, up to. to. Yes, exactly. That's it. And do you have data caps by any chance, or no, is it just that 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 general sort of if you use too much, we're gonna? They don't ever, uh, as no? far as I know, limit anything. But you know, I, I have to pay extra because Atlanta, <laughs> right? I have to pay extra to have unlimited, and uh, it's like thirty five bucks. But um, I mean, that's something, right? But I'm I use regularly like over three terabytes a month, so. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I think I'll pay the 35. Yep. You know what? And that's what I was saying to my wife because I was so upset about the whole like we're paying three times as much. And she's like, yeah, but we use it for everything. We don't have cable. We don't have landline. We use a voice over IP phone. We stream on everything. You know, we use our Internet. I, I don't know what my stats are for how much data I use in a month, but it's got to be astronomical, you know. And, you know, and she's right. So for what we pay, I mean, it's essentially all of our utilities in one, you know, besides electricity and stuff like that. But I mean, it's all of those utilities in one thing. I mean, we pay for Netflix and a couple other streaming services. But for the most part, you know, we, we cut the cord years ago with cable and all that stuff. So sorry, Nate, you were going to say something? Yeah, I, <clears throat> I have uh, Gamcast and... um or Xfinity, whatever you call it. 
but I don't have those kind of speeds and I'm limited to one terabyte. And I think I, I pay for like 150 megabits per second. I think I get 80. So I think if I got 50, that, that seems about right. Well, that that seems a little unfair. <laughs> I'll say. Oh, and I, and I spend you get about, half I think, of what you pay for, you know. Yeah, that's good and I think I spend about I think seventy or eighty dollars a month for it as well. And I don't have TV. So it's now, the to best be, deal in town. To be fair though, when you talk about those kind of speeds like gigabit speeds and all that, that's really reliant on the other end of that connection as well. So you're not yeah, gonna yeah. get that, you know, any random website or any random like downloading files. I'm there's still plenty of sites where I'm getting the same or worse download speeds like yep. I'm never going to let this go, but any PPA that's being hosted by Ubuntu. Every single one. Oh, it's Fair so bad. ADSL, so bad. <laughs> I don't. I don't have, I don't have that yeah. problem with OpenSUSE. The, the keys are great everywhere, all across the software. Life's good. <laughs> now, a lot of a lot of places are, you know, uh, co-hosting or, or, you know, geo-hosting using, uh, you know, different ways of, of um, mirroring their data and stuff like that. So a lot of times they'll have something close to you. And so, but it depends on, on the site, right? Oh, and I actually, I heard a story this morning about Google's going to start shaming slow websites and put like a badge on the site or something. Don't it's a basic, that. I'm not, I think that's terrible. They deserve like, it. They need to step their game up. <laughs> that's and that's Google's take on it. All right, uh oh, everybody, be quiet. Oh no, here we go. Oh, I'm out, guys. It was real. <laughs> All right, <laughs> I'll have to join you there, Adam. See you later. Hey, wow. Michael, good to see you. <laughs> I'm out. Are you sure? Yeah. Oh, uh, we are. I'm sure he's still We're out, happy. man. Jury's <laughs> still out. How's it going, man? Sports. No sports. Oh, okay. Sports ball. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure this is sports. Because every time I go to like a the thing with my my brother, he was like, "Hey, what are you like? You want to watch the game? Like, of course I want to watch the game. Whatever <laughs> that, game it is, that's <laughs> the kind of that's the kind of shirt a geek wears. Because you just I, gotta I say sports. Shirt. Nice. <laughs> I want that shirt. Yeah, I just I just got it. I went for the gray, which I think was the right choice. Although yeah. the uh, the yellow because it's gray underneath and it, and it's it's one you know just one print I think the yellow would look better on a on black or blue but black, that's definitely. okay. <laughs> I have a th I already have so many black t-shirts I'm trying to break out of that. I have habit. nothing but black t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! So Michael, what's happening? Hey. Man? Just working on stuff. That's all. Of course. Well, thanks for stopping by, man. Absolutely. You magically I'm... heard somebody say plasma. In... Yeah. No, that's not why I came. If you did. You know, I, I could hardly tell he was on Biddle last week. Right? I actually Are found out. He was on Biddle. I, he was. Did you believe it? <laughs> you, you, you didn't even hear him I mean, participate. I know I watched it, but. <laughs> you were on it. <laughs> it's almost like he didn't talk at all. I know, right? Like I actually actually made a comment to Rocco. I was like, you know, Michael doesn't have to answer every single comment. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. But he does. Yes, didn't. you did. I purposely <laughs> let that one go. I mean, don't you see that? <laughs> yes, that there was actually very many I let go. Thank you. I was very very courteous. That's the new natural like golden ratio: the number of questions unanswered to one answered. No, I, I let most of them go. I was like, hey, there's like probably every single sentence. Like, yeah, I got a response to that. But I didn't do it. It's called self-control. I'm sorry I missed it, sir. Yes, we're sorry too, Nate. But th fear not, you know, Michael was there. And I was I was there as well, helping and out. I actually, this is the first time I didn't actually try the distribution too, like, I didn't try Kubuntu because, of course, it's a good plasma. I mean, that's just, right. That's that's a <laughs> right. Best. Plan. Admittedly, I think I was playing Diablo during the middle. Wow. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. No judgment. I was listening. You you were there. That's all that counts, right? That's, 
great, man. <laughs> no judgment. No judgment. About... Yeah. Well, nothing I mean, what is there to me, say? Like, nothing that wouldn't get me caned from the plasma crowd. It's, it's, uh, you know, it is the type of thing that I don't know what, to, you know, it's like old faithful. Like, what do you, what's interesting to say about something that is just, yes, it changes as the plasma versions get released, but it's Kubuntu. I mean, to me, that just basically says, it's like one of those brand name things where you just say Kubuntu and it immediately makes me think like stable, always works, you know. I can do whatever I need to do without any kind of fuss or problems. It's just makes sense out of the box and I, I don't have to do a lot with it. I mean, it's, it's kind of like mint. A little bit boring. Well, and I give <laughs> it is, it is, it is boring. Right. And that's kind of the thing. Like, what do you say that's interesting about it? I mean, especially if you use it all the time, because then it's like, Oh, there's a new release. There's a new kernel. There's a new yeah. video driver. Like, Okay. Well, that's, uh, I think that's because KD Plasma lends itself to being what you can make it and not what it is by default. Because everybody's going to switch stuff. Everybody's going to move stuff around. You're, I don't know many Plasma users that use the default settings. No. Probably Michael. Michael probably does. Even no. I no, don't no, use no, that's the right. default settings on Plasma. You you really can't if you're using neon or something where it's vanilla. You just nah. The only reason you can I, use default plasma is using Kubuntu, which changes almost all, all of the, the defaults, defaults in plasma. Yeah. yeah, that's the only reason. That's why Kubuntu is the one I talk about with people and I I promote to people because when I say plasma is great and they try on something else, they're like, "Wow, there's so many things that are weird and broken." And like, yeah, because you shouldn't be using that distro. That's right. just weird. Well, I mean, I already appreciate Ubuntu just because I'm used to, you know, Debian based and apt and it's just the way my mind works. And so it's basically Ubuntu with the best version of Plasma for me on top of it. So, I mean, it's really hard to go wrong. And with this latest release and the 435 NVIDIA driver on my laptop, which works perfectly, finally, uh, you know, it's, there's really it is close to being as perfect a Linux experience as I've ever had in, you know, the last 15 years, which is saying something. So look at the look of determination on that man's face. Good Lord. That's because you... somebody said Michael was wrong. <laughs> Are you talking about what? <laughs> there it is. You were right. Uh, <laughs> no he didn't say he didn't say that i was that i was wrong someone said that they didn't like kubuntu because there's too many packages and i was like huh just use the minimal install that's all i was saying oh my goodness Come to bed, you're right though I can't no. someone's wrong on the internet <laughs> <laughs> i'm not i would never do that uh you know what god sleep i mean <laughs> sleep i mean yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's it's actually one of the most ridiculous things that people complain about oh there's too many packages just uninstall it it's not that hard well and he's right though the minimal if you do the minimum <laughs> install it is pretty darn minimal i mean there's not a lot left after you check that option yeah, um, the only thing that they have there that's, that's i think is still excessive is k3b by default like that just seems like a weird but thing i mean like keep. okay so they have like a lot of packages right like what's the install size like five gig no. Is that really that big? I mean, it's only slightly larger than the compressed ISO. Like, yeah, it's not very big. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't like, think, I think, but they take, but that, that, even if you take that the full Kubuntu, it's, yeah, it's like five gigs. You take the uh, actual minimal install, it's like two and a half gigs or something. Yeah. So it's like, I don't know. It seems like kind of a moot point. It's tiny it's, compared to like Mac OS and Windows and other. So small. I don't, I don't yeah. get it. It's well, just I love the argument about how people say that stuff is like certain win window managers are lightweight and some are like heavy and blah blah. And then every single like one of those heavy wins same like memory usage as XFC and the others, right? Right. I mean they all they say that plasma is heavy, but they're completely wrong about plasma being heavy. That's never been true. Uh it's there was really a bug these ten years ago. Realm. Yeah. And that's also just because of JavaScript, because they chose JavaScript for some reason. But the uh the the plasma thing is like it's the minimum requirement for plasma is 512 megabytes of RAM. 
That's so just a computer. ridiculous. Yes, a computer from 15, 20 years ago. I don't ago. know if I'd want to run that computer. It's not that's a recommended. Good, but that's it's just a possibility. <laughs> <laughs> they recommend a minimum of two gigs, but... I have a this this little idea book, this Lenovo idea pad or something like that. I can't remember what it is. One ten S. It's got a two gig of RAM and then um, some sort of Celeron processor, thirty two gig of of storage space, and I have I'm running Plasma on that, and it's ooh, this butter. I mean, you know, once you start a browser app, you're kind of hosed. But outside, now of do that, you have you to know. turn off the compositing at all? <laughs> once nope. you start a browser, you're hosed. No, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it looks great. Just don't do anything, you know. Yeah. Well, just don't use browser stuff. You know, that's why I'm so, a big believer in. It's all go for you know. man. So that that whole conversation around uh, XFC and plasma and which one's lighter and the memory footprint, um, that was interesting enough, just as a as a thought exercise. But you know, my mind goes to the usability, and I, I'm not knocking on xfc it's just personally for me like so people say oh well plasma is like the settings are everywhere it's so complicated there's so many settings when i go into the xfc settings i honestly don't think it's that much better personally i mean there's there's a lot of stuff in there and there's also weird things like if you change the theme in one place you have to go to the what is it the window manager setting and then you got to change the theme there so i'm and i'm again I'm not trying to like start a flame war or something here. I'm just saying like it's different strokes, right? You're used to how it works in XFCE. So when you go to Plasma, you think this is just overwhelming and confusing. I'm used to Plasma. I go to XFCE and I think the same thing. So it's all perspective. I think I use Gnome Gnome. I'm used confusing. to one button on my mouse. <laughs> we don't scroll here, folks. There's no right no. click. No, there's there's one single bar. click and that's all you get. That's what oh. was meant for grabbing. I had an email the other day, and it was from a guy who was talking about plasma. And he said to me, how can I get rid of this cashew? Like, wow, what version was he running? I said, you know, I, I always thought myself, it was a kidney bean. The cashew <laughs> is like, I, that's like a long time ago. Like, they went to the hamburger menu and everything. Like, what, and why is it all always food? Anyway, um. Gosh. They went to this other menu. It, so it does look like a cashew. Here he's running uh, Centos, my favorite nut, CentOS, however you want to say it, CentOS. Yeah. And he, I guess, the latest version of Plasma for that is four point two. I mean, they, there's no way the latest of the latest CentOS is well, that seven, old. Probably, no, no yeah. he's on like he's seven, not on maybe, the latest. Yeah. He's on seven. That's what it is. He's not okay. on the latest CentOS. He's on okay. seven. And I forget, 1908 or something. like. Well, I, I would say, one, why are you using CentOS as your desktop? <laughs> Two, why are you using an old CentOS as your desktop? Well, he obviously <laughs> has a reason why he's running that. I don't know what that is, but he have, I mean, nobody would run that without a reason to run it. But It is I, possible to get rid of the hamburger menu, not possible to get rid of the cashier. That's, you have to install a specific was. plugin. There's a plugin for KWIN or Plasma or something that you can do where it will, every time the cashew loads, it will automatically get killed in the process. It's like that's <laughs> not a solution. The solution is to use a system that's been updated from the past 10 years. Right? Like you're ready to force a seg fault. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I that was what, pretty comical. Wow. Yeah. I never understood why people hated the cashew even. I mean, I think it's because it cashew back. looks terrible. It's the first thing I turn off. I love and that. you I can't like turn it menu. off. Gone. I would, I, would, I, would, I would see it and I'd be like, you know what? I really want a can of cashew. So I, my I, grocery bill went way up when I, using plasma I, early on. <laughs> well, didn't it go way up when you like saw the hamburger menu? Did you say it drove you nuts? No. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> I like That's it. what you're here, cheaper. folks. That's what you're here for, folks, right yeah. there. That's right. All of John Euler, spirit animal. Yeah. Bring it. <laughs> <laughs> Eris thinks the cashew is ugly. Eris, that is a very random comment. I've never weighed the attractiveness of, of a cashew before. I think well, I mean, the irritation well, I mean, factor would be higher no. than the ugliness factor. The irritation factor, for sure. The difference between the cashew and the hamburger menu is that you can get rid of the hamburger menu with a simple checkbox. That's why everybody hated the cashew. 
And mm. most people didn't think about the ugliness of the cache because the rest of the whole system in the KDE four days was distinct by itself. So it didn't even matter at that point. Who, who wants brush nickel chrome looking windows? Mm. <laughs> Mac users. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait. That wants its windows back. That's not enough. Let's make a blue glow instead of a shadow because reasons. I, I Actually, the, I didn't mind the blue glow. I, I like really the didn't. blue glow. I, I, like I thought that, so that was pretty cool. To green. That's fine for anybody who wants to live in some kind of weird sci-fi world, <laughs> but that should not be the default. I look back at the, I look back fondly at the old KDE because um, even back then. So I ran GNOME two on Ubuntu, but very early on I started running Kubuntu, and and often when I was running like. Mandrake and stuff like that. I was running the KDE variant of stuff like that. And yeah, that old KDE, especially at the time, comparing it to Windows, well, we well, had we even gotten XP at that point? I don't know. Yeah, it was XP at that point. That's okay. the thing, though. I mean, KDE even, won at that, like 98. At that time, KDE looked way better than Windows. So, I mean, it had all these, like the like the blue... Glow. I mean, that was something that we didn't even dream. Of. I would highly disagree. Yes, you could do more, but not. It did not look better. It was cool, it, dude. It, it was it, cool. Looking. Way cooler. It was so cool. In looking. regards way to the blue cooler. glow, if they're going for like disagree. a cyberpunk Wait, thing, it's not cool looking in 2019, but it was cool looking back then. I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I only every recently... time I was like, "Hey, you should try plasma." It's like, but it looks disgusting, so I don't want to. And then they're like. Well, you could change that. Like, I don't want to. Uh oh, Nate. Looks like John's saying Amiga OS for the win. Yep. And I just told him that Workbench is still the best desktop. Nice. Well, I don't use it. Like a clown <laughs> one. Nate, I have a question. Sure. Good. Fire away. No, f- go ahead. Finish what you're saying. I, I lost it already. I'm. I'm- <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, so I think if, uh, if Plasma was I do that all the time. Like, yeah. Plasma was going for like a cyberpunk thing I with the blue mean, glow thing that more of like a cyber chump thing because it just does not look good at all. I loved like, it. I thought it was blue awesome. glow. Just it was. It reminded I, me I, of like some teenagers like riced out Civic. Yeah. Like, yes. Put, like, exactly. Underneath. That's why I liked it. Yep. <laughs> I agree. I want blue lights everywhere. Actually, I actually want green lights now. My windows better be wobbly, lights. fast, and furious. I have wobbly windows on still. I do. Put them on plasma. Not, not, not extreme wobbly. A little bit. A little wobbly. A little like a little elasticity to my windows to say, hey, these are these are more than just a floating <laughs> thing. Well, it's that's one of the things I said on Biddle, uh, Nate, that that the default wobbly windows in plasma are perfect. They wobble just enough. I mean to Make it look good, but not annoying. Right, a, a slight wobble that says, you know, I'm not, I'm not drawing on parchment paper. I'm actually drawing on <laughs> silly putty. You know, that's not, that's not. I don't. I take that back. That's not. That doesn't sound good. That doesn't sound good <laughs> either. But I get your point. Yeah. So I was actually going to ask you, Nate, about any further adventures with your new CAD software. Uh, Fusion 360. Uh, is that it, what it's called? Yes. My Autodesk <laughs> runs in Linux using Lutris super awesomely, which, no by the way, way, that's actually the first thing I've ever installed of Lutris. And I was actually a little, I, 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 I had a hard time figuring out how to use Lutris. Don't tell anybody that. Keep that a secret. And um, can't count either. 90s was five four. years ago. Well, the 90s was also five years ago because I'm, I'm going to stick with that. I graduated high school. Six years ago. Right? There you go. Anyway, it's been very awesome. I've really enjoyed uh, using it. I've, I'm building um, something I've already I've already made, like, a, like a, something I've actually fabricated. I'm turning it into a, a CAD object so I can create some prints so I can give give those plans away for this. It's my home education command center. It's got card holders and folds up nicely and. Well, anyway, so I'm, I'm putting it together so I can I can give people the plan so that if they want to build it themselves, I can just point them <clears throat> point them to everything they need to get to get going with it. And uh, then I'm going to be building a um, CAD. I saw some plans on I think it was on Instructables 
like a, a slide out pantry that goes between the refrigerator and the wall for those people that have small kitchens. I'm one of those people that have a irritatingly small galley style kitchen. So I need more storage space. So Sorry. I'm going to, yeah, it's just, I mean, who, whoever designed the kitchen, I want to, I want to bust a chair across their teeth. I really do. I just. Obstinate. <laughs> there he is. Right? There he is. <laughs> He's changed midstream. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so I, I want to, um, I'm actually going to, re I'm going to, I'm going to actually tear some walls out and, but that, that comes later. I want to pull out pantry so I can put like my chips and things and stuff. Not that you many chips. No. Sometimes I got a hankering for some tortillas and some salsa con queso, you know. But, so um, I'm yeah. kind of scatterbrained myself. And so I need to go back to deal, deal, ELN extend episode for a second here. Okay. Nate, where was yes. the the uh, parting goodbye? Where was Did the we, we normally hear you say see ya, see us. Maybe Eric and cut that out. Eric must we have didn't. cut that out because he didn't we didn't do it this week. That that last voiceover bit I had to do because when I went to the recording, I, I was like, we forgot to say see is or goodbye or anything like we just stopped after the where you could find us and we want to continue the discussion like that yeah it, there was nothing and i was oh my god only, only a few episodes <laughs> in and they've become pretentious I, I, I was gonna say like what <laughs> happened to that man you didn't even say goodbye to me dude <laughs> you know what it was, it was an accident yeah and we just that night we were recording and it was just kind of like we got a little later than we wanted to um yeah we were we had a long day it was just kind of like we let's just finish off because the previous week we had had Mr. Uh, is that the bunny face thing from uh, Donnie Darko from Donnie Darko? That's what it looks like. Um, to me. I'm not sure. I have to look at it. Hold on. That's exactly what it looks like to me. Anyway. Yeah. Rocco, I Frank, apologize. Frank the rabbit from uh, sorry. Go ahead. I, said, go I ahead, apologize. Nate. I'll make sure that a C is in there. I think I had my arm. You can't hear it. They're asking if it was Donnie Darko mask. You're not muted. No, I know I'm, I'm muted because I'm saying that she can hear you. Okay. Hey, she. <laughs> what a nice guy, huh? Right? She yeah. can hear you. Yeah. You're anyway. streaming. Why are you <laughs> surprised by that? <laughs> we got to have at least a little bit of this in the stream. That's what keeps it yeah, interesting. Good old right? Harold Petrotsky strikes again. <laughs> nice. Bonus points for the reference. No one else will get it. I love yeah, it. I love it. I, I don't. No, you it. won't. You won't. You don't won't, worry. Yeah. Yeah. It's just for the cool kids, right? We just. Yeah. Fine. I know I'm not that. I'll stay down here under the yeah. cool kids. Get get down there. This is like Hollywood Squares. <laughs> Actually, that would be fun if we did like. Uh, how many people would you need for that? Nine. I Nine. Think. Nine. Oh my god. Oh my god. That is it. That, that's that's my next idea for a stream right there. All right. Folks, Hollywood Squares is happening with Linux stuff. I love it. Yeah, you have like you have, to have the Spanish it. flea music though. You know the Spanish flea. Yeah. I've got some Herb Alpert. Don't you worry. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> On vinyl. Oh yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, he's what a he's a hipster. <laughs> I was a hipster before here, such man. a thing existed. Do you? That, that's a, how hipster you were. Do you right. have a player? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, got turntables. I mean, I mean mm -hmm. an older one, or is it like a modernized a player? Um, it's probably thirty years old. It's from the oh, early nineties yeah. or late nice. late eighties. Yeah, something like that. He's got two turntables and a microphone. That was that. a good drum break. Uh, <laughs> okay, somebody got the reference. I like it. I did. <laughs> of course, it's back. How can I not? Yeah. There you go. I I need a turntable. Because I have all these like really cool old like kids. Records oh my gosh! That um... Nate has one of everything in that basement. <laughs> have we have we figured that out yet? Like Except I don't have a turntable. I think you should be on the next episode of Linus Tech Tips uh, Tech Orders. <laughs> oh yeah, he has a Tech Orders, orders. thing. I yeah. Don't, know don't let him, don't, don't, don't let him know about my laptops. They're not the hoarding. Nice. <laughs> scuffy the tugboat. Everybody well, loves a Scuffy the tugboat. <laughs> gotta, wa gotta watch out for Coppa now, Eric. Go yeah, there record. goes my stream. <laughs> All right. 
Oh Thanks, my Nate. gosh. Forty two thousand dollars later. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Thanks, Nate. <laughs> Now this content is directed towards kids. Enjoy paying for that BMW you didn't buy. Listen, children of all ages, right? There you go. I'm a child. Yeah. That's not good enough anymore, Eric. Uh, you just very killed it. complicated. Thanks. Thanks. Very complicated. Yeah. I'm a fan of Techmoan. Have you seen that guy? Yeah. Oh yeah. Like, yeah. Love, I love that Tech guy. Techmoan. I feel like I own money because I'm as much as I watch. Nate, did you watch any of the Explaining Computers? I have. Isn't he great? I like how dry he is. Oh, isn't he fantastic? It's <laughs> the yeah. best thing ever. Unless we're going like, to unbox the, the, most the tape here. He's the most interesting, boring person. Yes. Yes, he in, is. In a way, I feel like I've been in trouble watching him a few times. Like, I don't know why. Like, he's talking. Like, yeah. like I did something wrong. <laughs> well, it's, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, like it's, like it's some kind of like academic remediation. Yeah. You failed the test. Now you have to hear the lecture again. Oops. <laughs> yeah, I, I, Techmoan, I've been watching for literally years, and it was when he was still doing like the dash cam videos. And, um, oh, that guy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, re I recognize the name, but then I was like, no, I'm not sure. Then t the dash cam. Okay. Yeah. Totally. Yep. And then, yeah, explaining com Christopher, is it Barrett or Barnett? It's something like that from, uh, from explaining computers. Yeah. He's, he's fabulous. Yeah, it's Barnett, right? Barnett, something like that. Yeah, yeah. L LGR. I don't know who. I don't know who MD yeah. SJ is, but no, LGR. LGR is good. good Eight bit Murray. guy, yeah. Eight bit guy. Yep. Yeah. Parafractic retro recipe. I really like that guy. Kind of, kind of quirky. Makes me smile every time. So, so he's more he's more gaming focused overall. But uh, you guys in a YouTube channel called Ahoy. Yeah. That guy. That guy does some. Really good stuff. Um, kind of goes in a lot of history and stuff about the old computer stuff or old game stuff. Um, he did like, and, and his videos are usually really long. I think he did uh, one that was like an hour and a half on how the Cold War shaped gaming. What? Okay. It was really good. And he did like an hour long, like, investigation, investigative video on Polybius. Like, I think you put a link, share a link with the uh, with the class. I could, um, you know, I don't know how this internet thing works. <laughs> it's a fad. I wouldn't worry. You don't have to worry about it. It's just a fad. It'll, yeah, yeah it'll, it'll pass. It's like radio, it'll cyberspace. <laughs> yeah, Actually, so his most radio. recent one was a uh, an hour. It was an hour long video on finding out what the first video game was, and he's going back to like really old stuff. It was like stuff back in like the 30s and 40s. It was really good, and I, I think the he's, production that, quality is so good too. That's cool. He's being very liberal with the video and games part. Yeah, yeah. I'll uh, I'll post it in the YouTube chat for anybody else who wants. Oh look, I'm not a moderator, so that didn't go through. I'll chat. Where are you? In. No, no, no. I just gotta find you. Oh. Hang on, give me one just second. Post anything, just post anything. It's because all you do is come on and troll you. and thumbs down my videos. I right? Don't, I don't blame you for not making me laugh. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm not saying I'm surprised. <laughs> I just forgot. I guess you, you can just troll? like approve the comment, right? No, I didn't even see it pop up. Maybe I'm not a moderator. <laughs> just I don't just know. post I, Adam, post anything in the chat and he can do it there. Yeah, I don't know why. I'm just I'm I'm not finding you. That's all right, Adam. I'm I'm listed as a possibly a few others in that category. Fair enough. In the description. There you go, Mr. <laughs> Grubs. Okay. Well, you didn't and you didn't say up front though. You didn't Everybody clarify. enjoy. There's all kind of people. Did that not like linkify it? It's it's a link to its own website. Doesn't show up as like a clickable link. It'd be uh, clickbaity. That's why. Uh oh. You're right, man. This <clears> World Wide <throat> Web thing's a fad. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work yeah. often. It's the I mean, it's been around for how long? Highway. So yeah, it's Mitch... been around for how long and it still doesn't work? Like, come uh, on. Yeah. Well, let's listen. Google's mantra is good enough, right? I mean, YouTube yeah. chat is about as basic 
and weak as chat gets. But hey, we've got billions of users, so it doesn't matter. They're going to use it. But it supports emojis, and that's all that matters. Kind of. They're awful. It's got the it's got the feel of IRC with the usefulness of an AOL chat. And... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's. Oh, and I so I have a re response for Mitchell. So he said half of these channels that we mentioned are uh, nostalgic channels. Because I'm old. I don't disagree. Um, but I have to say that new tech channels, in a lot of cases, they want to cover mobile devices, and it just it's gets. Fun. It's like they all, yeah, they all do the same thing. Oh, the new Pixel's out. whoop do doo So, I mean, it just gets, it's like, you know, I really respect uh, MK, MK, what is it? MKH? MKBHD. Yeah. Like, that guy's amazing. He has earned a place for himself. Like, he, he, he deserves all of the recognition he gets. But I don't really care for his content because I don't care about mobile devices. And I don't care about half of the stuff that he covers. I like him as a YouTuber and as a journal. I mean, I would even say quasi journalist at this point. I mean, he's, he's pretty hardcore, but yeah, I don't care about that stuff. So, yep. I only watch his videos when I'm looking at a phone that I might get. Yeah. What's great about Marquez is that he never took down his old videos. So you can mm -hmm. like sort it by oldest. You can see him when he's like 14 reviewing like some HP laptop or something. That's like, not COPPA compliant. So he'll get those down. That's true. Yeah. They'll be gone too. But, <laughs> Enjoy them while they're there. Now, I like to see that progression as well. Um, I'm not a huge fan anymore. I think uh, Unbox Therapy's got a little, like, weird. Um, it's but, amazing how he loves everything, even if it's garbage. Well, yeah. but if you look, he's the same way. Like, at least it was. You could go back and see his, like, earliest, earliest stuff that was super rough cut. And and that, and I honestly, I know I'm a boring person, but, like, I thought those were really well done. Like he did research and he presented them well. And yeah, at some point it just became about being entertaining. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, well. Wow. It's funny. I can think of many people that I won't say that Bill. I'd say the only like recent tech that I listen, that I watch is um, Hardware Canucks. Um, yeah, I like those guys too. Yep. Read. Because they're pretty. Uh, they're pretty honest about their reviews. I mean, I think they are, they're more about this is their opinion as users than it is about, Hey, some company sponsoring a video. I mean, they have sponsored stuff and they have, I have right. users, but so in the anyway. past when I, uh, I was interested in purchasing a laptop, I would always look up a tech mobile tech review. Lady Lisa does the videos. She does like super in-depth stuff that most, you know, these other tech folks, gloss over she talks about the you know, the actual experience of the detailed specs like you know she has like a colorimeter to measure the color on the screen and that, like who goes is that in depth uh, mobile tech review yes lisa yeah. she's awesome lisa, yeah yep and, like you know, never heard of that she'll, she'll be square out. with you about like battery life and all that other she stuff. takes the she takes the back off the laptop so you can see yeah. like what the internals show you are the inside of the laptop and everything yeah, That's she helped a lot. Like when I was looking for laptops, a lot of her content was very, very helpful. Yeah. It may not be the most like entertaining, sensationalist stuff, but it's actually useful information. It's like notebook net, well, but on a video. And she's also <laughs> a digital artist, so she does a lot with um pens and touchscreen yeah, and yeah. you know, input devices and yeah, I, her coverage is good. And it's, again, it's the same thing. There's a lot of mobile stuff that I'm not really all that interested in, <clears throat> but her laptop stuff is great. And yeah, and it's just, it's very low key. Like there's no like fluff and hey, look at me. And you know, it's just, yeah, it's. Yeah. Top 10 things to do when you take apart a laptop. Blow it out. Easy. That's number one. Upgrade the memory. Um, yeah, but sneezed in it. See. It's not going to conduct electricity well. I have. N I, don't, I think I've <laughs> taken apart a laptop maybe once or twice, just to replace a parts. drive or something. Yeah, I'd replace a drive or something. Nothing spits. Not, nothing big. Carl's right. Thermal paste number one. Yeah, thermal, thermal paste. paste. Yeah. Maybe I should do that at some point in time, but I don't. I'm not. Uh oh, 
Michael, Dan Kelly says he has a problem I with I see that. I, I, it seems more like a troll, though, so I can't believe it's in the <laughs> chat. So, you know. How do uh, we know it's Dan, the real Dan Kelly? Dan, right. Dan, it, it's not a bug. It could, it's it could a be Yannick or, Mar- or Dark One. Bad defaults task force. Go. <laughs> Well, Kubuntu has good, well, mostly good defaults. There's okay. still a few. Yeah, like it single is, click. It's, no, it's that's, exi- yeah, you're right. That is a bad default. Single click is a bad default. I <laughs> <laughs> got him. Got him. Posted. The thing is, if, if the developers don't continually change the desktop interface to suit me, then obviously. Right. So, that's true. Right. There is no reality beyond mine. Exactly. <laughs> my like preference. Access. You're sounding yeah. like Michael Tunnell. No, my preference mm-hmm. is what people should make by the expectation of users. There the way I use here, Plasma Rocco? is very different. Is there an echo in here, Rocco? <laughs> there is. <laughs> no, it's not how it's an expectation of users that are not me. That's the difference. Right. Because everybody besides yeah. me is wrong. <laughs> No, because my expectation of a system are I'm going to have to change things. That is what I expect. That's anything in with Plasma. Uh, well, I mean, not yes, but I can't really. Yeah, <laughs> there's nothing to say about that. It's just, yeah, there's so, so many things. The is, so in determining Michael's self-awareness, he looks in the mirror and he sees himself. He's aware of himself. It's the other things in the mirror he's not aware of. <laughs> what else would there be? <laughs> That's an accurate statement. <clears throat> I actually saw a did... video of a cat who was self-aware. Like, passed the mirror test. Like, it saw its ears in the mirror and, like, it stopped for a second and, then, like, looked up and it started, like, batting its ears while looking at itself in the mirror. And I was like, uh-oh. Whoa. <laughs> that's, uh, that's rude. Uh-oh. I, don't, I don't want to be that cat's owner. <laughs> but that's a, How could... Cat's going to have like an existential crisis. And... I, I, once had this... <laughs> I once had this cat. Uh, it was a really old cat. Actually, it wasn't mine. It was my roommate's cat, but then roommate left, and then I kept the cat. The cat's dead now. But I actually thought for a long time that that cat was a human transformed into an animal. Just the way it behaved and, and, and how it like, seemed to process the world around it. I thought, you know, I'm going to be careful around this just, just because I don't know. Maybe, maybe, it, maybe it's a lot smarter. I don't know. And now I'm crazy. I'll, I'll stop. Everybody hear that cat? You've upset the dog now. Talk, talking about cats. My cat's outside the door ripping the carpet apart. Nice. Oh, yeah, we definitely have that. those marks. That's what you get for locking them out of the room. Nope. Oh, so Dan says system settings crashes, other drives don't mount, and a few desktop icons I use go fuzzy. Interesting. That's, that's a sys- that's, you need a troubleshoot thing, because that, that sounds like some, some issues that... Uh, or not normal. Pretty big issues, yeah. So I would say go to the Kubuntu uh, Telegram group because there's a Kubuntu support group. I didn't have one system crash during the, using the system. I did have... I, I had said that on Biddle where I didn't have any crashes, and I didn't. But after Biddle and playing with it on Sunday or whatever, I, um, I ran into some crashes, but they were all while I was trying to add different widgets. So it was probably more due to the widgets. So I have mm. a solution for you, Dan, for all of them. It's all due to age. The system settings it's... didn't crash. You forgot that you closed it. Right. The <laughs> discs that don't mount never existed wow. in the first place. And the few desktops that go icons that go fuzzy are cataracts. <laughs> Dan, wow. you don't have to take this abuse, man. Wow, dude. <laughs> You don't have to take that abuse. Uh, love, Dan. We love Dan. We really do. Um, so Ali's talking about a TRS-80, which that was my first computer. 
And I, I, I did some, uh, lots of basic programming on that one. That was fun. I started with no storage whatsoever. And then we got the cassette tape storage, which was fun and m worked sometimes. And then I upgraded to the five and a quarter floppy, which was magic. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. I want to, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I have to ask you the question. Uh, who's trolling? Did either, did Dan Simmons change his name to dark one or did one use Dan Simmons as avatar? No, it's probably Matt. No, no, it's actually, show, it was showing Dan to me. Oh, I see. No, I see Matt. They're both in here. Both, yeah. both Dan and Dark One. Yeah. Oh, it's just, I guess and it's YouTube trolling me. It's then, possible. Then if we can get, if we get Yannick in here, then we got the trifecta. We got the three studios, right? <laughs> Guys, right? this is the perfect <laughs> opportunity to gaslight Michael. <laughs> right? No, my dad was telling me about uh, some of the computers he worked on. He was he worked on computers in the Navy, and then when he got out, and um, you know, big room sized computers, pushing all these buttons and pulling tapes off and changing them, and no thanks. I'd rather have my gooey. Speaking of that, I saw the there's a, a thing I, I noob. You know, YouTube recommends all these. <laughs> Things. Uh, and there was a, it was the refurbishing of the computer that destroyed the Death Star. H have you seen that? That's not kid friendly. <laughs> Death Star? Hey, Star Wars is a <laughs> beloved children's film. Thanks, Nate. Thanks. <laughs> we all live in fear of Copa now. Right? It, yeah. was, it was the computer that they, um, that they used to make those effects. And the guy who is a caretaker of the machine now, it was a super cool video about uh, fixing that. It took like years to get refurbish this thing. And they did it in time for some Star Wars anniversary. Below. But okay, now I got to find it. Like the computer for like motion tracking and stuff? Or? It was, no, it's the computer that did the actual effects of the Death Star rotating and then going into the, the um, channel, you know, the. On, on the surface of the Death Star, those, those are effects. Models. The computer generated one with the wire, the the, the wireframe. Oh, oh, yeah, the the like vector vectrex looking yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and so they they the computer that actually did that they they apparently pushed it well beyond the limits at that time for that computer in 1977 or 76 probably at that time. A super cool video though. I gotta I just watched that I think on last week's. Super, it was just an awesome historical old machine. Did we tell Michael like like he tells other people about typing? He mm -mm. doesn't care. Mm -mm. I muted myself <laughs> half the time. So <laughs> and he doesn't he doesn't use a gate or anything. Like why would he do that? Forget. Yeah, me. I mean that's ridiculous. I don't have a gate. I have a Yeti. It's a USB mic. Use pulse effects. I begrudge no. type to people. No. Pulse. What are you using, Jack? No. <laughs> I just plug it in. Worse. No, there you <laughs> That's it. Get the rock band out. Yep. Yeah. Being... Actually, that would actually block it. So, yeah. Well, we wouldn't hear anything except. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. I would, have to, I would have to eat it in order to hear the voice. Yeah. Yeah, that was fantastic. Let me tell you. Go back and watch some of those DL, those DL episodes. In the in I the, have, and they were yeah. fantastic. <laughs> You're like on top of the mic. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's to the side, just right next to my mouth. That's this. It's it was weird. I know. Yeah, it's like it's like Michael's talking through like a Middle East scarf through a Bluetooth headset. <laughs> okay, so at the time, I didn't think it was that bad. I went back and like a few months ago, I went back and listened to a couple and I was like, okay, it was that bad. All right. Fair enough. It was a slightly drive through. Yeah. <laughs> slightly drive through. I like that. They, they, the analogy for that. Welcome to Kubuntu. Can I help you? Yeah. <laughs> I would like, I would like plasma and uh, a side of fries. <laughs> I'll have some cheese curds with that since I'm near Wisconsin. 
I don't know if you guys ever listened to Tenacious D, but they did a whole skit about like a drive through and the whole time he's ordering like everything, but he keeps like saying like I want a diet soda because I'm trying to watch my figure, and then he like <laughs> he's ordering lets I want a small curly fry. I'm trying to lose the weight, like just over and over again. <laughs> like he orders a ton of stuff. And then like his his buddy is like, you know, he's like, what do you want? He's like, um, well, I'll have he's like, oh come on, man, you take forever. Like <laughs> he's like, oh. it's like oh, that's all I want, that's all I want. He's like, good. And then they get up, they ask how much it is. He's like, Well, I only have this. Forget that last thing. Just give me the you know, <laughs> it's his own stuff. I love Noah, but we have got to get him a better mic. That headset mic. He's it's awful. Me. Yes. Yeah, me. It's pretty bad. Yep. I started my channel with a headset mic. It was really bad. What I understand is he actually does have a legit mic. He just doesn't have it with him at his house. Well, he needs I to get be... one for his house. I must have some sort of a like a deficiency in my hearing, but I think I think it sounds fine. I think the rock band sounds fine. Do that I... to you. You know, I think I was actually just thinking, I wonder if it's related. Loud noises. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, the microphone, like, they're not terrible. They weren't terrible audio. It's just in comparison to high to quality audio, and you can tell the difference. But it was, it was better than like a Bluetooth mic or something. Like, it wasn't that bad. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't that bad. But um, Derek said we should all compare our early bad video audio videos. My videos are still bad, dude. And I would take the cake. I mine are terrible <laughs> are in the beginning. Bad. I'm still in the beginning. I mean, come on, people. I mean, yeah, yeah, and same it's... here. All, all my videos are are basically a. a poo I show. mean, if you, if you think about it, like it's it's kind of unfair these days. That like the the bar for like production values on YouTube mm -hmm. is set so high that like. For anyone to even consider you on YouTube, you have to have like a thousand dollar mic and interface and mixer and all this kind no, of stuff. And it's like you know, YouTube used to like it just people in front of their like webcams doing wacky yep. stuff. Like yeah, well, you, you, know, you and do no have one to... cared. No one cared that it looked like potato quality and crappy audio <laughs> as long as Wait, it was funny. Yeah. I didn't even start with a camera. I didn't have a a webcam when I started my videos. It was just screen recording. That's all it was, and me mm. talking. Well, so the to me though, and I don't know how many people agree with this. Audio is the single most important part. Yes. So, I the video can be bad. I don't really care unless you're trying to demonstrate something and it's bad. Then I can't see what you're doing. Then yeah, that's bad. But like, if I can hear you clearly, I'm fine. You know. Yeah. Video can be forgiven. Audio cannot. But there's which so is many why videos. I used a rock band mic. Well, there, there's so many videos, though. It's a shame because you think, God, you know, they put time into this and it's just the audio is so bad. Mm -hmm. And I hate to think just, I'm be, being like dismissive, but it's hard to listen to, you know? No, it's, it's there's some kind of cases where the video looks really good and the audio is just painful to listen to. So you just you, it doesn't matter. Yeah, like yeah. they kind of. Yeah, because like bad video doesn't act, you know, despite the hyperbole, doesn't actually hurt your eyes, whereas like bad audio will hurt your ears. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, but it's not just even bad. It's like poor quality. Is I mean, yeah, it's not it's just like, like some like people's looking, audio looking is at like a low res webcam doesn't is not as like jarring or actually like discomforting as hearing like a scratchy echoey you know, headset. Yeah, mic. I, that's what I, I'm. I'm saying I agree with you. I'm just saying that uh, you know it doesn't have to be jarring to be terrible and i won't watch it it just has to be so mm -hmm. bad quality that it's like i won't you know i'll be done i'll just click off of it yeah and it's a shame because i think a lot of people are creative and have something to say but and have the money. it's not a thousand dollars honestly i have a this usb mic that i have was 50 and it's usb and xlr i, I paid 10 for a cheap boom arm um I mean, I didn't spend a lot of money, but it, it, it makes such a big difference over, I mean, I'd been trying to use like a, you know, you know, headset mic and stuff and it's, it, you cannot get any range out of this. It's just, it's impossible. Right. So, <clears throat> I mean, I'm really happy with this mic. I, I, you, yes, I could spend thousands of dollars on a mic, but I don't know that it's going to make me sound that much better or 
if my goal is to just be clear enough for people to understand me, is it going to make that big of a difference? I, no, it'll change that... the like the depth of the sound, but it's not like the quality is not that big of it. Like you, you can tell the difference between professional level microphone and a fifty dollar or even a hundred dollar USB mic because you can totally tell the difference, but that difference is not so drastic that it matters. Like you can you can get away with a fifty dollar one or a hundred dollar one or even like a what just like a, a, a above average USB or even just a regular U, like average USB. You can get some for like I've seen twenty five dollar USB mics that were pretty decent. And, like and surprisingly that good. Even, that goes even further, Michael, when you're talking about when like we even game. And oh yeah. Because you got you got the game sounds in there and you yeah, got you can't all even kinds hear. of di- yeah. nah, it doesn't even matter then. You know? Yep. No, and you know what? I so this the reason I like it is because it's a dynamic stage mic and it blocks out a lot of noise. It's very unidirectional, so the only sound that goes in is right from directly in front of it. I had a compressor mic, a condenser mic, and it's it's not um a, a good one, so I recognize that. But I had so much trouble tuning it so that I didn't get just tons of background noise. Oh, and, yeah. you know, Condenser it was there is a, is a nightmare if you don't have the stuff set up to do it. Yeah. And then, you know, I was having so many problems with uh, pulse and getting it sort of the sound like the way I wanted it. So I did end up buying uh, the cheapest mixer I could find for like another 50 bucks. And so I think at this point I've got maybe one hundred and twenty dollars into my audio setup. And, and, you know, 300 hours of playing around with Pulse and everything else that I've been trying to do. But um, so I don't think you need, you just have to care enough to recognize, like, I go back and I listen to everything I do. And if I can't understand it and it's my own voice, then that's a problem, you know? And like, <clears throat> so I don't know. I'm not trying to be a perfectionist, but I do spend, a, you know, probably way more time. You can't for help the, yourself. Right. Well, it's funny because the hard, the stuff I work hardest on, I get like, 30 views on which i'm not complaining i'm happy that people watch anything i do i'm not pretentious and think like oh my stuff's amazing why aren't a million people watching that's it? exactly why people make the videos they do today on youtube because they don't want to make the content yeah. like you're making the stuff yeah. that'll actually help people well i bet you the stream gets 10 times the views that any of my like you know yeah prepared I'm... videos put together you know well i mean i know it's because all you guys are here. I'm I mean, sorry, so. Adam, but yeah, well, yeah, you're welcome. Look, man, oh, someone, someone's got to bring down. Someone's got to be king of the hill. That's not him. <laughs> <laughs> also, by the way, you forgot the importance of audio for color coordinated foam boards. Um, as so say if the wise John Euler. <laughs> it's true. It's true. I don't. I do not have. You know, and I've I've read so many audio professionals that are like, you realize those don't do anything, right? Like they do just for looks, literally nothing. Yeah, just for looks. It it does. There are things that it, it there is benefit to them, but the majority of the time, when you see people having those things behind them, well, not that if you have nothing. six of them on a wall behind you. Yeah, exactly. No, no. If it, just being behind you, that's because it's a set. That's that's just because it yeah. looks cool. It right. is absolutely worthless behind you because you are. Pre- that way so if you have the foam in front of you on the wall behind the actual camera then it's fantastic and it works you gotta have the markiplier style like complete foam room yeah, yeah. when i got to, when i went to ryan's and he's got those things on the side he i was like you know those are just like he's like yeah of course then then and then uh when i was there i was like okay you do actually have them on the wall behind the thing because that's where they're supposed to be yeah <laughs> yeah and uh, DT's right. They don't filter sound outside. Yeah, no. I mean, it's it's not a sound booth, right? So uh, Jason said something about being at System 76 and they have, a, I guess, like a, a room for testing the fans and the, the, the sound from the computers or something. So it's a mm-hmm. dead, quiet space. And he recorded something in there. And it, like, I would think it would almost be echoing in your ears. It would be so quiet, you know, like. It's creepy. Yeah. Like being in a sound booth room, like <clears throat> soundproof like that, it's very weird. Like it, 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 it doesn't, it feels unnatural. Mm. Hey, did you have to go in those really quiet rooms when you had to do like a hearing test entering the army? Yes. And they still make us do that annually too. Do they? And I don't yeah. like that. Yeah. But at, at work, we have a sound lab and they went to such an extreme level to make sure it was 
physically isolated. The concrete doesn't actually touch the concrete of the rest of the building. And so it's, it's completely, completely isolated and have it's even like pylons down deep into the, into the ground. To, I don't know why, but if, when you go in there, they have these, like the, the sound padding, not really padding, but the structuring on the walls is it these giant triangular mm-hmm. things. Mm-hmm. And um, it's, if you go, I, I actually cannot go in that room because if you go, if you go in there and you close it, it's so quiet. It is extremely loud in there. If that makes any sense to you, but it is, it is the most bizarre. Like, like I will. You hear your own thoughts. Like you hear, <laughs> that's what's so weird. It's what it feels like. It's like it's like you can you can hear the blood rushing through your ears. You can hear like you can hear your own body mechanics happening. Yeah. And it's a and it's it's just it's such a disturbing experience. That I don't know how the people can go in there into that room and set up the appliances for the audio testing. I, like. Immediately, I get I get like anxious just going in that room. I just want to hear someone so, rip rip a fart in there. <laughs> like just, that's, that's what I want to hear, man. <laughs> and measure the dBs. Just like like the most deafening fart of all time. <laughs> That'd be the smell then at that point. I must oh, be yeah. in a soundproof. Room it would a get lot. stuck in the foam. Yeah, too. it'd be in the foam. The smell would be in the foam. <laughs> I hear the yeah. my body mechanics all the time. You know, my ankles cracking, my knees cracking, my farting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my Hell goodness that? by the way i'm gonna call out uh matt here because he was supposed to be in here he said he was gonna come in and, and troll us in person and he hasn't i'm disappointed has He's nobody pointed out the fact that eric misspelled linux i was wondering Where? if he would ever if he was ever gonna see that on my obs probably yeah yes dear there's links can you what uh, just links. You know, it's, uh, that, remember that? Um, if it was L Y N X, that'd be yeah, awesome. Yeah, the browser, the text browser. I think the Atari link. I was thinking. Oh yeah, the handheld. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fun. I had a friend who had a, a Sega Game Gear, and he he thought yeah. it was the coolest thing in the world. And yeah, change until, batteries like, every half an hour. Yeah, until he like every <laughs> two days he's blowing through. Six batteries. <laughs> right. I was like, yeah, not so cool. I had a Game Dude. Gear, then I sold it. Got a Game Boy. Yeah. Like, this guy was just paying somebody's pension in Duracell. Like, oh, visitor. A visitor. It's bedtime. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> she was all proud she's learning to uh self you know uh, take care of herself so she's braiding her own hair now and she wants she's all excited nice yeah i should try that kick her out yep. i know right emancipation 16 you're out of here <laughs> yeah <Bam. laughs> that's right that's not copper compliant <laughs> yeah that isn't we're on the accelerated program here <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh Listen, I'll I'll teach her I'll teach her to use Linux and she can she can fend for herself. So actually <laughs> did you mark this rated for kids? So funny you mentioned about <laughs> kids, like funny you mentioned about kids taking like being able to take care of themselves. I have a coworker who's he's part timer now. He was an intern. He's like nineteen, I think, nineteen or twenty. And uh he lives in student housing, like not not like a dorm, but like apartments that students have. And uh, he, the stories, like, it seems like every week somebody's burning something in the microwave or somebody's, like, you know, almost started a fire or someone's thrown something over a balcony or, like, I'm just like, who who, who on earth would want to rent to you guys? Like, who wants to take on the burden of renting to a bunch of, like, freshmen and sophomore college students? And I'm just like, just also, how, how are you guys, like, burning everything like you're just cannot prepare food you know you can cook you can burn a lot of foods but once you burn popcorn that's it you're out that there's yeah, no, that there's is no the worse worst uh, there is no worse smell than burnt popcorn although yep. there's no better smell than popcorn that's not burnt i don't know uh the me, dichotomy think, of man i'm thinking brussels sprouts is smelling worse oh, than you you guys popcorn. in brussels sprouts this week i love brussels sprouts Broccoli. Yeah, yeah. Uh, who, knew, who knew it would be such a divisive uh, subject? Garlic and Brussels butter. Sprouts Ooh, are my, 
terrible. Dude. My roommate oh, cooks like no, my roommate will boil wrong. cauliflower, and it's the whole house is a big <laughs> fart. Like it's so bad. <laughs> it smells so horrid. I also Listen. like uh, cauliflower and Brussels sprouts. So if you not if you don't like the Brussels sprouts, then you're you're, you're doing it wrong. Uh, I'll take in butter. It's nothing more than a vehicle to get the salt and butter in your mouth. It's a vehicle. Once, I have tried you... them every which way, dude, and there's no way. Next time it's self, I'll show you. <laughs> wow. The whole the whole conference is going to smell like a fart. Yep. <laughs> no, we'll go to a restaurant and I'll just get some specific. <laughs> do it in the I'm not going to make them. Do it in the elevator. We'll, we'll, do it in, we'll do it in the microwave that you get in your in the hotel room. <laughs> Well, any other good recipe uh, ideas? <laughs> oh, wait, he's here. He's made it. He's got a good promised. recipe, I assume. Oh, that's probably why he joined, I'm sure. Yes. Cooking tips Yo. with Dark One. That's that'll be his alternate channel. Linux tech and Linux tech and cooking. Actually, I watched this thing the other day. There's this uh grandma that does like um like obscene cooking like she sits there and swears the whole time oh, like <laughs> that. it's it's i mean it's totally like a gimmick but it's very funny because she's just the juxtaposition yeah exactly up oh, there he is he's shaking his head already what have we done to offend you somebody's Matt? using an xps <laughs> yeah nose cam nose cam yeah <laughs> up oh, and he's muted I actually know it's the Lenovo Legion. Same difference, though. Very nice. This is when Dell and Lenovo weren't thinking about anything. Yeah, it is same truly... The, same when Matt bought that. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> it is the one thing about the XPS that I have, the 8th gen, 7th or 8th? I'm not sure, but it has that nose cam, and it is... Well, and the speaker. The, uh, the microphones are absolute garbage as well well i could say the same thing about uh how, how's that 2080 working out for you rocco whatever second? dude whatever <laughs> cyber power you're not so, hey look boats That's aren't it. supposed to stay permanently in port and neither he, is cable right he just has to hold the cable and it, and it works fine you know <laughs> rocco left he left That's it. he's, he's gone yeah would Maybe you expect anything card. but trolling from me? I don't have to take this. I think his video. No, nope, he's back. Never mind. I don't have to take this. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I said it was optional. <laughs> the cost of pulse. So what's going on, Matt? Not much. I'm uh, doing work stuff. So. <laughs> oh, that sounds terrible. What so kind of work stuff? Terrible. Being stuck at work. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. That's work stuff. Yes. Elevator stopped working. Gotcha. Uh, <laughs> John, I wish I was in a padded room because this place that I work at drives me insane. <laughs> Doesn't sound like a padded room. Uh, no, it's not. It's actually a uh, conference room. Oh, my goodness. <clears throat> so, uh, I haven't seen much, uh, many videos out of you. You're on, a, you're on quite a roll there for... For a bit, yeah. Yeah. I uh, just don't have a lot to... People uh, must have been really annoying you there for a little while. Uh, only if their name starts with an L and ends with a Duke. Uh, <laughs> don't be any more specific. Okay. Well, it's all good. Did, did anybody? Speaking of that, did anybody read the uh, OMG Ubuntu... Einpone versus the um, Librem. Have you read that? No. No. Is that the one that has the beautiful infographic? Yeah. That compares the stats or the, the uh, specs? Yeah, that was the one Joey did. I loved it. Yeah, because you actually look at it and you're like, huh. $100, yeah. $100, $150. Yep. I feel like there was a was a slight poke at the pine foam, but I can't, I can't remember. Oh, it's not going to be perfect for this, for everybody. That's like, you know, the pine phone hype is, is I think it's justified, 
but it's definitely i think people are going to get it and realize that it is definitely not like high-end hardware on I purpose mean, yeah but it's like if you think if you think you're going to get high-end hardware for 150 dollars, i mean Look, that's michael insane, you know how people so. are though you, you know you just yeah. know when people get them they're gonna be like oh it's slow or you know it's, it's the screen's only 720 it's gonna be every Probably. dumb thing you know that's why I'm getting the Braveheart edition, so I can like preempt that. What was the <laughs> thing where they they said they couldn't retweet it because they didn't want to confuse people? I made a stupid joke. Uh, I made a I made a version. Uh, they they made they didn't want to retweet it because people might think that they get the skin. But I took oh, okay. William Wallace from Braveheart's face paint and put it on the back of the Pine Phone because they had the Braveheart edition. That's basically nice. it. Nice. They said that they're gonna once they said once they all set, sell out they're gonna retweet it. <laughs> well, maybe someone will jump in and make a phone it. case. Maybe. I mean, you could do a phone cases on uh, Teespring and stuff, can't you? Well, I mean, specifically for a Samsung or an iPhone, yes. Oh, good point. <laughs> well, you can do that's like what three D like printers are skin. for. Yeah, or it could just be a skin. You could just have like a like a sticker. Maybe does design like that. If only I knew someone who knew how to do CAD and 3D printing. Right? Right. I knew. I wish I knew somebody that was good at it. <laughs> yeah, me too. Well, there's Yannick. <laughs> That's right. He's good at it. Have you seen yeah. some of his stuff he's done? I have. Yeah, but then you're, you have to go visit the troll besides me. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Oh, my goodness. So, um, has anyone uh, been using Lubuntu this week? Not yet. No. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. No. I, I mean, look, I'm going to try it. I just, I've been too busy. Like being on streams and stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah, blame me. Okay, I see how it is. Now that, the one night I had, you know, Eric you know, got me on the I stream. Yeah, I did have it all open tonight. And and yeah. What do you know? He says, hey, yeah. what? Mm -hmm. yep, that's all over. Yep, yeah, I see I, how it is. I was going to download Ubuntu, but when I moused over it, I had this like Sauron-esque flash of Dan Simmons' face, and it just, I had to step back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Dan. Uh, it was the eye. It yes. was the eye. The eye of Dan. Oh my goodness. Well, I did. I tried it when it, um, I try all the Ubuntu flavors when they come out in beta. And then if I find anything, give feedback. And then, uh, and I have tried it. I have lots of questions just in general about. So one of the things I was doing, I have this side thing that it's very slowly coming along called Linux discovery. And, uh, I'm putting in different distros and desktop environments and stuff like that just to it's it's mainly for beginners to just understand all the choices. And um, when I went to their website, first of all, it's confusing because they have the two website thing. It, there's nothing they can do about it. The guy that owns the one isn't willing to get rid of it. And so it's confusing because that one comes up first and you got to go to the dot. I mean, there, is, there is something they could do, but yeah. What could they do? Or something canonical could do. Well, yeah, right. <clears throat> so anyway, so that's that's kind of confusing. But then if you go to the .me site, um, one of the criticisms I had was it doesn't really tell me anything, right? If I was a new user and I wanted to use Lubuntu and I go there, it's just like one or two sentence little like it has a bunch of programs and you can do stuff like it doesn't really explain the, the point the purpose of the distro and that's something even not as a novice user i kind of i would like to hear from them why i should use lubuntu right is it because it's lightweight <clears throat> is it because it's mo using a modern qt interface is it because i mean there are lots of reasons i can just kind of think of but that's me thinking of it and not someone sort of top down saying this is the, the purpose of it. And I don't know. I just, <clears throat> when I use it, yes, it's complete. It has all the pieces that you would need to run a desktop operating system. I just, I don't know that I quite 
know where is its place? What does it do? You know, because I mean, we've got XFC, sort of the champion of of you know lightweight or older hardware, and then you know KD. Except it's heavier than everything else too. Well, but I mean, that's, it's got that's, this. It's got the reputation of being lightweight, but it's not. Fair enough. I mean, but that's it's also one of the ones that's slower changing. So I think for a lot of distributions, it's that's easier true. to use. Right, they don't have to spend a lot of time dealing with new upstream packages on XFC. So there's, I mean, anyway. Um, so I just, you know, and then you have, you know, Plasma and Gnome and um, Budgie and Mate and like you got all these choices. And I just look at Lubuntu and, and LXQT and LXD, and I think, where does this fit? What what problem is it trying to solve? What advantage or feature does it give me as a user because i just don't know I, I i want someone to articulate that nate why don't you articulate that if you take <clears throat> you take lxqt instead of using the open box window manager thing and use kwin instead now you have something that's pretty great if you have something that doesn't have very you know if you basically you want something that looks good, you know, so you're going to stick with not use okay? Um, Naturally. Then you're going to use Ubuntu because it's it's a it's just better looking. Something about the GK just kind of looks so, I don't know. To me, it just looks dated. I know people say, oh, the fonts are great. I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. But the, um, oh, the pixels are in the right spot. Okay, whatever. But the, um, the I don't know, if you, it, if you have a low spec system, you know, let's say you have a two gig, Big byte RAM scene. Then you have uh you can save about I think it's about fifty fifty ish or so megabytes of RAM running Ubuntu or running right just running running LXQT. And then you don't have uh some certain things like like Plasma does do like the um STDM, although you can change your, your plug in there. The the light DM uh, it you have like a real poor performing GPU. That is a better like the LXQT Meet how they have it all set up. It's just better for machines that just don't have the processing power. I can't quite do the plasma -y things because there is. I mean, plasma does seem to soak up a little more CPU than, and I, I don't know why. I haven't really figured that out, but I but just they, noticed. But they made a specific choice. So one of the things they did do in Ubuntu was, I think it was the either the eighteen ten or the nineteen oh four release where they very clearly stated, yes, in the past we had a direct focus on older hardware, but we're not doing that anymore. Like we're not going to support 32 bit. We're not going to like, it is, we have, well, we're moving to LXQT. Well, they didn't have a choice there anyway. No, but this like, was before the whole de debate around whether they were even, that's what I'm saying. No, it was like, they nine, waited. Was they were the last people, to, the Lubuntu was the last group <clears throat> to choose not to do 32 bit because it was on them to maintain all of those 32 bit packages. Because Ubuntu was, it was Ubuntu and Ubuntu were the only ones that were w interested in keeping 32 bit. And then when Ubuntu opted out, they were like, well, we don't have a choice now. Hmm. Well, but they did, there was a blog post or some kind of announcement where they did very clearly articulate the fact that that perceived focus or direct focus on legacy hardware was not their focus any, anymore. They yes, were that was the switch from LXDE to LXQ. Okay. And I think so. that that's, I think that's the reason it's, it's good because the focusing on the old hardware is ridiculous because that hardware that would need those things are, is not old hardware. That's ancient hardware. So you're looking at like 15 year old hardware is still 64 bit and still uses like much better power and much more Ram versus the, you know, the 20 years where it was massively ridiculous and that trying to keep, I think 15 years is the maximum that we should keep like hardware, like pushing I mean, as in the sense of like the desktop and like insisting on these things to exist because if an entire architecture becomes almost completely obsolete, it's time to give it up. See, <clears throat> I, I hear what you're saying. And I, I mean, I still use a 36 year old Commodore 64 to do on the I, to go IRC. So, yeah, that's different. That's a retro thing. You can do it. You can use it however you want. But that stuff is 
very specific for a purpose and they're very, uh, you know, they're not, you're, you're not trying to make a Commodore 64 work with Linux. I guess the kernel is not intending to make sure it has support for a Commodore 64. Right, right. Maybe the, and that's, that's the point, right? So if you have an older system that's, let's say older than 15 years and you have an LTS version of something from, you know, five years ago, 10 years ago, that still has that support, you're not going to get security updates, but you have a working system. Nate, you know, you're using Mm -hmm. Commodore 64. You don't have any reasonable expectation that they're ever going to change that in any way. I mean, it is, it's a snapshot in time. So you know, it, I think if you had that older hardware and you had the availability to at least download an ISO from some era that made sense for that system, I mean, and and good luck hacking my Commodore sixty four. See what data you can get out of it. Any personal data. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just like the principle of like, in order to keep these this retro hardware, they're keeping these these systems in a like just completely frozen state of of software. So that they can keep those things running, but they're not, do- and they're doing it for the, the 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 joy of having these ridiculously old machines working, not because yeah. they are anywhere reasonable to use, and that's why these all these arguments about thirty two bit versus thirty sixty four bit is like thirty two bit is on its last uh, run anyway. There, and, and I mean, there I are know. situations where those systems still power you know, industrial process. Like, there are reasons why those systems still run somewhere for some purpose. And Rock, are you trying sure. to head out? Yep. I'm going to be heading out guys. I'm All right. fading away. Thanks for joining, man. I appreciate it. Yep. We'll see ya. See ya. All right. Yeah. Drive safe. See, wait, Rocco. wait, you have to turn the open sign on and then back off. So we know for sure. <laughs> do we know if you're real? Oh, okay. Okay, cool. Okay. Close now I got it. All right. Rock is out. Yeah. Later. Yeah. So yeah, I I don't know. I think there are definitely cases where there's a purpose. It's a small purpose. It's a very like I mean, yes, so you're right. Developing the mass market Linux kernel for older hardware seems like I mean they're still doing that for sure. <laughs> well, but like they just removed ISDN. They just removed like wasn't there some stuff that they've started to pair they- out of the they removed this type of ISDN that was removed, like from like 25 years ago or something. But they still have support for ISDN overall. Okay. So technically speaking, that you could still do it if you wanted to, but it's no longer like the main stuff is no longer in the mainline kernel. But you can get a module to make it work. Uh, but there's there's also um, they removed I think Spark or something like that, mm-hmm. and uh, some other and a few other ones that are don't the it, machines don't really exist anymore, and mm-hmm. Uh, that stuff makes sense, and I and I agree that 30, the kernel shouldn't get rid of 32-bit because they need support for. If the kernel didn't have it, then the, the, the distros wouldn't have a choice, and that's reasonable. And I do think that we are in a we're currently in a state where 32-bit is still necessary for libraries and certain things for certain industries. Like there's even there's governmental in, 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 uh, uh, agencies and some like a lot of healthcare servers and stuff that are using 32 bit and a lot of uh, utilities and stuff like that, that does make sense. That they have to exist, but those things are very esoteric and specific work, work, uh, you know, work case. So, uh, versus an entire desktop having this dependency, right? A general use desktop system for, that's that old. You're just, you're not, you're not going to have a modern browser. You're not going to have like, it's just, it's probably not going to be a great experience. So, but a purpose built system for some process, then yeah, mm-hmm. like that's, that makes sense. And especially if the software is written in a way that it has to run on that kind of architecture or what, like, yes. So there are definitely reasons for it, but like, so what I'm saying, like you don't need new things. If your software is not changing, then the underlying system doesn't need to change. If there's no, you know, pressing security concerns. If it's a system that's not connected to the internet, you know, or not networked in any way, like you can run whatever you want on there. There's no real danger of anything happening. So I, I also think, and I think we've talked about this before, but Ubuntu is more of a consumer, the Ubuntu and the Ubuntu families. Mm-hmm. It's more of a consumer based desktop, you know, system, right? I mean, yes, they're, their desktops they're, they're are targeting- very, very consumer. Consumer base, so so there's really no point. In well, general purpose, tell, let's say, right? General. I mean, purpose. there the desktop is probably consumer friendly. 
but the, like but yeah. because they make the the desktop and the server the same system overall that you could kind of argue that they're also doing server stuff i mean i mean they're definitely doing server stuff and iot stuff and yeah. all that other stuff well the underpinnings what i, what I yeah. mean though is who who is their target market it's it's not you know that debian leave, leave debian up to using the older or esoteric hardware that's just right. they're more they're tooled for that that's what yep. they yes. that's what they do so yep. let them do that i mean what what value does it bring ubuntu it's just my opinion you know, no there's no, there's no there's no value, no value for ubuntu to but have think, all these old hardware so, but and these this but, whole thing can be solved easily with stuff like lexi and containerization of app in certain if you, if cases you as if you as a as long as the kernel supports you know, running 32-bit stuff, and it's like you, know, you as a developer can compile your own 32-bit libraries. They're open source, and you can have them in part of your as part of your app, as opposed to you know having to pollute the rest of the system with 32-bit stuff, right? Well, so still, you know that would that would take the load off of Canonical for having to support all this extra stuff, and only the apps my packages. And, that's a news. That's a separate thing. It used yeah, to be two thousand. So, so Carl, Carl in, in chat's asking about why Steam needs thirty-two bits. So I think you know, Adam, that kind of like games, yeah. segues into that whole. They need to support all the games forever, right? They're I mean, working on that, right? Oh, and yeah, you're talking about containerization. What what is this? Do you understand the new containerization option that they have? Yeah, so it's what does that do? It's basically like Flatpak, but built within. It takes a lot of views from Flatpak. And they're basically containerizing Linux games to have their own runtime, similar to what they do with Proton, because like Proton is its like own runtime. They have different versions. Of some games are targeting certain versions. And it's the same idea that you can have different runtimes for the game. So like an older game in Linux would require some older libraries that may have broken you know, when they changed ABIs or something like that, newer stuff. But you can have that runtime for like 1204, 1404, you know, for like different snapshots in time, and each game can target those, and going forward as well, can target those runtimes, similar to the way Flatpak apps target. Yeah, and because you would, only, you would only download that runtime if you're a game. Yeah, because right now, um, I've been messing around with Proton quite a bit, and one of the new things is the, the, the way you're talking about, Adam, is like kind of pseudo shim kind of kind of approach to Linux games because there are some games that use older Unity stuff that really doesn't work very well. Yeah. It can be problematic. So it's basically the same idea as just having having these containerized runtimes for the games to target. Yeah. I think that that's um, uh, the best approach they could take in the in a yeah. case of a gaming platform. Mm-hmm. And they're and they're doing it in a really interesting way with doing the having the proton in in this tender system separate too. So it's kind of like they're they're covering all bases, which is why every time Valve comes out with something like yes, fantastic. So then they're like, hey, you liked the last thing, new Half Life. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's not three because they well, still can't count to three. <laughs> I, I think I think I think they shouldn't ever do a three for any version of the everything. They, they should up to what people no, right. no, that's They the should just do won't. they should do code names forever. For like they every they'll do a one and then a two and then just do code names forever. Ever do three. Just just for the sake of it. And then at some point when they decide to retire the franchise of whatever game it is, then do a three and it's just a video that says bye. <laughs> the ultimate troll. Well, I do find it. Fu- Man, saying bye. Yeah. I, I was gonna say I do. Fu- I do find it funny that they're calling this one Alex because that's actually a continuing. I'm almost curious to see if it's an a, what would have been episode three from the uh, the episodes. Isn't it a VR title? It's it's a VR title, but I'm I meant st- from a story perspective because because yeah, yeah. the episodes are actually very story heavy compared to like the actual like Half Life games themselves. <laughs> I had a Here's- VR headset for a while, and uh, at one point I got sick. Like, I didn't throw up, but I got really like nauseous from it. And from then on, I just couldn't use it anymore without feeling nauseous. Was that what? What? Which uh, headset? It was an Oculus. 
was it the for like one of the dev gens? No, it was, it was the it was the retail unit. Yeah, so it was the one that had the ninety hertz displays and yeah, all the yeah. other. But it had, so it had the camera set up, they, like little sensor camera things, mm-hmm. and I only had two of them, so I had two in front of me. So when I turned around, sensors couldn't read the thing anymore, and it flipped out. Oh, because, gotcha. And so like it com- it made me really sick really fast. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was playing Project Cars, if you can imagine. So I was trying to back up a car in VR. Oof. And then, like, yeah, it was it was not a pleasant experience. Um, Everything got flipped that, upside down. It was down. amazing. Before <laughs> that, it was awesome. But, you know. So if you had a higher quality, like a this, the index from Steam or something, would it still yeah, happen? Something. No, if you had something that, like. No, I mean, for you, would tracking? it still make you nauseous if you, if you want, let's use it again? It's been it again. a while. It's been a while. It'd be hard to tell. Okay. I mean, I'd have to put it on to know, but it's a pretty disorienting experience for me. I mean, I, I suffer from like air sickness and stuff like that, car sickness. Mm. And so I'm kind of like a natural target for that kind of thing. But I just thought VR was too cool to not try. Yeah, uh, for sure. Yeah, it was it was an awesome experience. But yeah, I, th- I think that the newer headsets that like do the inward out tracking like, are a lot, a lot better in that regard because you don't have to worry about is the sensor bar seeing mm-hmm. anything or cameras. Yeah, you you don't have a lot of the uh, first gen limitations, basically. That, yeah. Because yeah. it's like I, I remember when like Oculus came out, and then you had like you had the Vive and stuff. If you're looking strictly at the those two units, the Vive was the, actually the better product. Yeah. As far mm-hmm. as because it was it's room size. Yeah, I went with the Oculus because I had the better because that would help me not get yeah. sick as much. Yeah, because that was the one thing that Oculus had was the 90 hertz and the, the 1080p yeah. panels on the goggles and stuff. And you know the, the screen door effect and all that, you can see that when you first start, but once you get in the game, you're not even on that anymore. And like, it's crazy how immersive it is. All it is is like a screen slapped to your face, but it's like it tricks your brain really well. And like you're looking over like the edge of a cliff, like you get that like and sensation of like whoa, you know, stuff like crazy. There was a my the one moment I really think about was us playing the Nvidia VR Funhouse on Steam, mm-hmm. and there was a a basketball like you know those like arcade where you like shoot the basketball and like rolls back down to you kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And there was a game I was doing that, so I was like you know grabbing the basketball and throwing, grabbing bas- and I was having fun. But then, like, I lost my balance a little bit, and I started to fall forward. And not even thinking that this doesn't exist, I reached out to like brace myself on a machine that didn't exist. And like, so like, you you're just so convinced that you're there because you can see your hands and everything. Like, so I was so convinced that like I was about to like fall onto the machine. Like, it was that's creepy. It was awesome, but yeah, it was a scary moment because it's like, whoa, this is real. But you know, like. For for that brief moment, you think this is how I'm gonna not get hurt, and it doesn't work. I bought a uh, Galaxy S7, and it came with the really old. I guess it was an Oculus. It's an Oculus Go. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, like it's the phone snaps into it or whatever. Um, and it's for even as bad as that was, there was a there was one where it was just you were sort of in a desert setting. And there were, you know, so there was a campfire and then stars and, you know, and even that was so immersive that you sit there and you do, you completely forget, like, this isn't real, right? I mean, it's, yeah. so I, I I'm, I'm definitely want to try one of the newer ones because I can only imagine like how, you know, just incredible to, with a crisp, you know, display and better refresh rate, stuff like that. But, uh, yeah. But it's a workout. Some of them games are a workout. <laughs> yeah. I want to play Beat Saber. Yeah, I would lose so much weight if I could play that. <laughs> it it looks so fun. So I had a... Buddy, a go ahead, Nate. No, please do. So, so concerning the VR thing, uh, at, at my uh, employer about a year ago, we were doing uh, testing of designs in VR, and I was designated the guy to set up the scenes, and, and they've been working like, designing manufacturing lines in vr and everything else too so we can actually test can we actually build these things can we, you know actually testing the process and whatnot for a new design 
and it was very immersive. But after about about five to ten minutes of using it, I wanted to revisit my lunch or breakfast, and yeah. I just could not. I, I just could not do that. It was not working for me at all. So, a lot of that's the refresh rate, though, right? The screen has to be very quick. Yeah, any kind, any kind of like frame jutter or like frame time, like frame pacing problems, and you're instantly aware of it. You're instantly yeah. sick. And, yeah. and when you're trying to adjust, like I was, I was having to account for like gravity and some physics and whatnot, and I didn't set the properties of the floor properly, so I just started falling, like infinite falling, and that really oh. messed me up. I had to take the yeah, thing off, and nope. I was done for the day. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it was a, like game over. <clears throat> I go back to my click and drag. I tried so I did try to play this um it was a game that was on the Oculus store is like it's supposed to be some kind of horror game and I'm not I'm not really that big on horror to begin with. And uh it was this you go into like this house, it was like um like you're supposed to it's like some like murder mystery thing and you go in the house and like walking around with the th- with the thumbstick thing and I go and like turn on the T V because it tells you to or whatever and you like you reach down turn the tv on it's just static and you see like a shadow from like the light outside like pass across the wall and you, you look behind you there's nothing there it's like i was just like you know what it's not worth it <laughs> i'm not gonna <laughs> do this nope <laughs> this is just <laughs> it's just not happening i am not gonna i'm not gonna live this i actually like, want them I feel to like make that, a uh... that would definitely cause nightmares because that's like you're in it right like yeah. that would that would be like an actual trauma. Like I just didn't want to go there, through that. There is a game that I played a long time ago. And it it's a game based on the movie The Grudge. And it was the Japanese version of that movie called Juon. Mm-hmm. And it was made for the Wii of all platforms. And it only existed on the Wii. And the crazy thing is that the the way it worked is that you tried to find your way out of this building. And uh, the only thing you had was a flashlight, which was the Wiimote. So you would actually kind of like control your character by walking around with the flashlight and everything to have that. And like just that as a regular game was creepy. Putting that in VR would be like nightmare fuel. No, it, it was. It just wasn't happening. <laughs> well, well, it's funny. It's funny that you guys mentioned that because there were. I was online, and there's this, there's this meme that was kicking around on some of my uh, video game uh, friends that were sharing. It was a kid with a PlayStation VR on, and it just said, "said said would play Mario or something." But then the guy shows the game, and it's Resident Evil Seven. <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> for the VR version, <laughs> and I, I kid you not, this kid's like maybe five. Well, that's a little messed up. <laughs> that is definitely not compa compliant. Yeah, that is. Not. Parents don't do this. <laughs> well, I even like to be fair though, the the, the Juwan thing is a super creepy game, but it is hilarious to watch people play it. Like, it is pretty hilarious to see it. Just because, like, I played here was like that. Yeah, just if you, if you play it by yourself, it's even more disturbing. But if you play it with friends or whatever, it's these games are not that bad because you 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 get the experience of it freaking you out for a few seconds and then them laughing at you yeah. for how ridiculous you got th- you got freaked out. They go from like horror to like jubilation yeah. in, in a matter of moments. It's, it's a like, weird roller coaster of emotion. Yeah, that, I can't possibly be safe for, for your blood pressure. <laughs> well, you don't do it every day. Just, yeah. <laughs> you know, just so, rare occasions. That's all. So, uh, different topic, but I found <clears throat> this article earlier, and I posted it about um, VPNs and how most of them are one. Well, not most. A lot of the more visible ones and popular ones are actually owned by marketing firms because they've figured out mm-hmm. that they can make a ton of money off of their sort of ridiculous claims and so yep. um i use winscribe as one of my vpns it's a canadian company they they're just they seem like cool guys um they've never been tested so i have no idea if the logging is solid but the way they talk about other services i assume that they are doing the right things but 
Um, <clears throat> anyway, so they did an analysis of the sort of top VPN providers mm -hmm. and how terrible they are. And the premise basically being that, you know, VPNs claim to protect you from trackers and from, you know, basically just being followed around on the internet. And then you look at their websites. And so like cyber ghosts, which is one I haven't heard of, but apparently it's pretty popular. Um, they have, how many is it? It's, it's a ridiculous number of trackers and it's everything. It's Twitter, Bing, Mixed panel, Facebook, Trustpilot, Pixel. Facebook, Impact, VVO, Hexagon. I mean, it goes on and on and on and on with all of these trackers. And then their ads follow you around the net. IP Vanish is second. Pure VPN, Hotspot, Nord, Express, PIA. Um, PIA had bad writings? Well, they only have New Relic and Google, so it's not nearly as bad as the others. Um well, that's only our on their website, right? Yeah, it's, it's so if you basically if you go to their website and then it's just um, you know because Google yeah. Analytics, I don't really count that necessarily because that's not necessarily following you around. It's more the yeah. I mean, technically, stuff. Google Analytics itself is following you around because everybody uses it, right? But the uh, PIA themselves are not getting that benefit. Just Google, so it's like. Um, that's a weird situation where you can't really avoid the Google Analytics part because technically speaking, if a company uses it, they're using it for typically good purposes of trying to improve their services and stuff. But uh, no like, analytics. Yeah. I don't have a problem with analytics. So it's more the, all the other stuff that they again, claim to be, you know, that's the whole point of using their service. And here yeah. they are. Well, I mean, if, if they're doing it on their service, there's on their website, it's different than doing it on their servers, their services and stuff. So no, absolutely. Absolutely. I and that, and that, I wouldn't and be surprised if some of them legitimately actually did do logging and stuff where even though where they claim they don't. Well, and that was something else I found out, you know, that a lot of these, um, anyway, so, I mean, the, the point of it is that they just sort of because they're owned by marketing firms and really it's a, it's a commodity. It's a, commodity business, right? They just have to mm -hmm. sell more and more and more subscriptions in order for it to be profitable. And so anyway, I just, I thought that was really sort of telling, you know, how, you know, they make it all these sense. claims. Yeah. So. Um, and how they can afford to spend more money on their marketing than they can oh, their on their actual budgets, security. Yeah. Are unbelievable. Yeah. Um, Nord was like spending so much money on like advertising, but at the same time having not enough on their security. Yeah, absolutely. But anyway, the other one that I wanted to bring up was Brian from Endeavor posted. He, he did a blog post today about uh, he called it sometimes shake it off doesn't cut it. And it's basically about because they delayed the net installer f for very good legitimate reasons. And I'm glad they did because better to have something that's working than not working. Yeah. And he's gotten so much. um I guess negative feedback, you know, people saying how disappointed they are and, you know, and it's just every day constantly on Telegram and Twitter and everywhere else he is, you know, just people like, oh, I can't believe, you, you know, you missed the deadline and all this stuff and how he's just trying to deal with this on a day to day basis and more or less saying, you realize that we're all like all of these projects that you use, like they're just some random people who decided they're going to dedicate time to this and you know, it's not a job. They're not making money. It's not like they had a yeah. deadline in the first place. Um, but my that, question, the irrational. To him, but my question to him was, um, I wonder how many of these people who contacted you about being disappointed offered to help in any way. I'm guessing not many, if any at all. Zero. Yeah. And that says it all in my opinion. And his response was exactly no one. So, yeah, zero. And also the people who are typically offering help are completely understanding of not wanting to release it when it wasn't ready. Mm -hmm. Like th they said that it was possible that they could have released it, um, but that they had a, I think it was on their blog post where they were like, we didn't want to release something that we, you know, we expected to have bugs because all software has bugs. because You can only test so much as a developer and then uh, not have the people to do the to t development on it. And because the one of them left, or two of them left or something. And it's like, yeah, that's totally reasonable. Of course. Like I'm, it's unfortunate. I mean, I'm not disappointed that you had to do this thing. I'm, 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 
Um, it's unfortunate, and I wish it didn't have you didn't have to deal with that kind of thing. But it's like, yeah, you have to deal with it. Sure, why, why would anybody get mad at having to deal with stuff, especially when they're doing it for free and they're doing something that has really very high importance to it, and also is something that's unique in the sense that they are technically doing a a Intergos successor, but they're doing really Intergos the right way, which is what I'm, I want them to do it right. So I'm okay. I'll, however long it takes. Uh, well, I was I, supposed to go ahead. Matt. I, I was going to say, uh, I was going to quickly say, like, I do find it funny that the ones that are going to be the ones to complain about, Oh, you missed the deadline are also the guys that don't understand that they're probably the last ones to either contribute to any of these projects that they're complaining about. And that these developers are giving the one thing that they can't replace, and that's time to develop this stuff that yep. they are using. They are giving the most precious commodity they got. And if you, yep. if you want to whine and complain and not help, then there's the door. Go elsewhere. But yep. like, if you got stuff to complain about, with these projects not hitting a deadline because of technical reasons and very good ones, then I, help, either help or go, or go elsewhere. It's that simple. Yeah, I agree. Or, or think about the idea that these deadlines are created by the person who is doing the work. So if they want to change the deadline, they can change the deadline and it's no longer that anymore. So they didn't miss anything because they changed the deadline. Mm -hmm. That's how I justify my being late to everything. Well, yours is <laughs> <laughs> you run on Michael time. That's all. It's kind of like Valve time, but yours is in millenniums. Mm -mm. As you can At know, see, my my lights are becoming dimmer. And dimmer yes, uh, you know, that happens. So I'm gonna head out, guys. All right, Wonderful all right. time all right. with you. Later, chat. Guys, Have a good night. I will. You too. All right. Take it easy, Adam. I find it rather shocking that someone would complain about a delay on free software. I mean, really. I'm not it, shocked what? by it at all. Well, okay. Yeah. Or, yes, it happens. Got it. No, what I'm saying like it happens to the point of absurdity. Like if I see any project say provide any deadline whatsoever and they don't meet it, I expect at least 10% of the people who are aware of it to be irrational and uh, spew toxicity. I'm just saying, I think that those people are out of line. They are out of order. Because if they're not going to, if, if there's no skin in the game and they're not going to, then shut your mouth. I mean, really. Stop. Yeah, but just those people are irrational and they don't, they're, they're the people who, if you do something good, they won't congratulate you on doing it. But if you do something bad, they will take this, like the let. Just the um, this the minuscule amount of time that they need to get the most hate they could come up with, they will spew it at you immediately. So if you miss something by five minutes, they will just give you so much hate. Like it, that, that kind of thing happens all the time. It happens for every single thing in open source and uh, the uh, and free software community, like all the time, because the. Like uh, and a lot of the time it's the zealots that are doing it because they they somehow have like a weird entitlement to something. Like, yeah, yeah, I don't get it. I mean, I don't, don't either. Wrong, I, I I rib on the GTK people a little bit only because that they're most seem like they're zealots to me. But um, but like really, everything that that I've used in Linux, everything asterisk everything asterisk. Um, is great, really. I mean, there, this software that I don't have to pay for that I can use and I can make my life better. It's it doesn't cost. I have I do not have to, you know, spend any money out. I spend any money on it. You no, know? mm -hmm. I don't know it's just it's just such a wonderful it's just such a wonderful gift. It's a beautiful thing, and then you got heads out there doing that i want to be i want to be careful because i know dark one he's kind of you know he's a sensitive color uh, oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> you, you uh, hurt my virgin ears 
<laughs> so the the uh, and I agree that there's there's this it's just this weird I don't know this weird reaction that people get entitled to something that they aren't paying for and aren't doing anything to have any reason to be entitled to something like it's it's so weird because when you you look at the same like the same kind of like software side for the commercial products that are proprietary and stuff and people pay for something and it it breaks just maddeningly and they just complain about well software sucks and whatever they don't just immediately bash the company by being the worst company ever or worst developers ever yet the free software part that is what they do okay well, and I, so I want to touch on something Nate said too. So I've backed a bunch of different open source projects and some of them have failed, you know, just closed down and that, you know, whatever it's, I don't see it as like, oh, well I paid for something and I didn't get it like that. This whole, like Michael, you've said before, calling free software, free software was a mistake from like very much the beginning, you know, because there's so much value in it. It's, there's nothing free about it. It's somebody's time. It's a lot of people's time, you know, ultimately, and it's money to support the websites and the infrastructure. It's, yeah, you know, not, they don't even mean it. In, they don't even mean it in that term of free. That's the sad, like the sad part is that they don't, no, even I know, I know, way, but, but that's like, no one thinks of free thinks in it. Libre. Everybody thinks yeah. free is in beer, right? Exactly. Like the fact that they have to express the difference every single time they say it should have been a sign or like, maybe we shouldn't name it this ridiculously awful name and somehow it doesn't matter but like the fact that stuff is the stuff in the free free isn't gratis era or area of of software has more entitled people than percentage wise than you would see in a commercially proprietary thing which is the most confusing thing ever because they shouldn't be entitled they should be the they should be grateful and thankful that these exist Yet it's the opposite. And that's not to say like, and it's 90% are fantastic people who are totally understandable and grateful and everything. But the 10% are so loud that it is yeah. just, it is mind numbing. Yep. That's what I said to Brian too. I'm like for every one noisy person out there that has their opinion, there are probably dozens of users, if not more, who are thrilled with everything you do, but they just don't vocalize it the way those people do mm -hmm. and and one of the things shame. i always say is just say thank you to people that's yeah. one of the, the the biggest things that it's the easiest thing to do and surprisingly nobody incredibly does effective yep like when i let this is so dumb and i know i'm a total pollyanna but like i logged that ticket earlier with pods on github because mm -hmm. we were having an issue with the website. It turns out that they just changed the functionality. It actually does work, but they, and they didn't announce that they changed it. So anyway, at the bottom of my, my bug report, I said, you guys do an amazing job. I love this software. It's transformative. You know, keep up the good work. Like I always try to be encouraging, especially if I'm doing something that someone could look at and say, well, this guy is complaining or it could be negative. Not at all. Mm -hmm. I just not working the way it used to. Like, something's different so either i'm doing something or or it's broken but i want you to know that i still appreciate what you're doing you know and i yeah it's it seems like a stupid thing and even when i'm typing it i think are they going to look at me like i'm a weirdo but i just feel like if i put that in there at least i have some intent behind it where it's like you understand that i appreciate what you do and i'm just trying to right. be a good good citizen here and you know that's also just probably a good policy in general because how many people like the percentage of people who are perceived as negative that aren't actually negative is probably high too. Because right. Because you're, you won't, you, they won't express it. Text doesn't express that. And you can use all the emoticons and stuff you want, but it, it, tone <laughs> is, is impossible in a lot of senses. So yeah, I've had times where I would like um, give critiques for uh, different add-ons for Firefox or give different critiques for plasma or whatever. And uh, I would say stuff like, I mean, like the weird thing is, is that in some cases there are people who are so interested and so passionate about something that it might come off as um, negative, but really it's a 
because they care so much and they want it to be the best possible. That's their, in, that's the foundation for why they're doing it, but it, they're not expressing it in that way. So it kind of comes off as a weird, uh, a weird rant, you know, like I've done that with plasma before when I, uh, when the first time I ever contributed to a KDE, there was a topic where I'm not going to go into details, but or whatever, but there was a conversation that was happening that one of the things that was said was so confusing. And it made it like the, just the reason why something was done was so just esoteric randomness that I just didn't understand it. And by me asking the questions about like, could you explain to how is this relevant to this blah, blah, it came off as them telling me that they, I need to read the code of conduct and stuff. I was like, that's not what, because I asked you a question to, to clarify what you mean. And how does this remotely affect the actual product or project or whatever? And well, it's just weird. Because that happens all the kinds. Of, there's there's so many projects that are like that that you know well, have uh, this weird reaction like to that. Well, I think what it is is because a lot of these projects. I, I get what you're saying because, in fairness, these guys do deal with a lot of the vocal noise. Yes, and it's hard to find a signal sometimes. Right. So the default usually becomes it's just more noise. Right. You assume uh -oh. that they're the worst. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, but sometimes I think it's also a symptom of these guys being so attached to a project that any criticism valid, even one valid, mm -hmm. that it's hard for them to take on That's the true. same note. So I've actually it, had discussions with people in KDE about things that they have nothing to do with and they get offended by me not liking something that they didn't even do. And this is over the course of like six, seven years. And there, there's people who are no longer even a part of the KDE community who did things that didn't make any sense. And I tell people now that it didn't make any sense. And they would be like, well, that's just what they were doing. I was like, you don't have to justify it. It, it doesn't matter that they're not even involved anymore. So like, why do you care what their reasoning was? Like, if it's not a good decision, you revert the decision or whatever. And sometimes they listen and sometimes they don't. But that's just that. I mean, every it's not even just. You know, I'm saying, Katie, because it was like I I just had a conversation with a few of them you know, this week. But there's, because uh, it's one of the projects that I like to contribute to as much as possible. And there's a lot of projects that are like that. I've contributed to, I don't know, I can't count the amount of that I actually you know sent stuff to, but they they all have a thing where they deal with so much, um. Not because it's a lot. The quantity is not a lot of the horrid, entitled nonsense. It's more of the, the fact that they're so loud and consistent because there are times where DL is a good example. This Week in Linux and Destination Linux has comments that are vi vile, negative, and are typically done by the same handful of people every single time. And, and I see their name like, just whatever you're yelling at me this time. And, and, it, and it, it, they might, some people might not be paying, paying attention to how many, uh, who was all sending those things. So like, they don't see the percentage or they just see how many comments are happening. But really it's more like, it's just the repeated five comments or something. So it's not really a big deal. I think there's, it's just a perspective issue for both sides. Well, that comes up too with, um, with the RTFM stuff. Like I've been accused of, of, writing rtfm responses to people and that's absolutely not what i do i i give context but then i will link to something instead of typing it all out again or copying and pasting it what's mm -hmm. the sense of that you know so i think i understand your issue i give a brief synopsis of my thought process and then i link you to the content that i think will help you but i've had people go well this isn't helpful at all or you know you're just rtfming me and it's like no i'm not if i was rtfming you i would just say Here's a you know just blind link. No, with no kind of no. RTFM doesn't even doesn't even offer the link. It just says the <laughs> letters and that's it. That right. is it. If you do anything other than that, you are not RTFMing people. So, like, and also like the fact that I think the worst 
possible. To, there are two things that I think are the most infuriating things in support of any kind of project or any anything. If you have support online, there are two things that are the most annoying, and they're equally annoying. One of them is RTFM. That is definitely really annoying, especially considering most of the time the manuals are garbage and not helpful. Uh, but then the second equally irritating thing is when you're on a forum or something and they tell you to search for the solution. But I found this from the search. I found them telling me to search from the search. And it's like, just put the link. Right. Stop saying search for it. Every project that does that, if you ha- if you are... If you are running using a, a, a project or using something or a forum or whatever that has a te- someone saying search for it, report it to the people who can make them actually give a link or something because it guarantees a endless loop. Because I've had multiple times where I've gone to a project and I gave up on the project completely, specifically because every time I tried to look for a solution, it was just people telling me to look for the solution. It's like that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah. Well, you know, the other thing about, we'll just search the forum. This is happening to me more and more lately. So like I was on the Ubuntu forums recently and I searched for something. It was three different, it was a three three word string and it comes back and it says your search term is too general or there's too many results. How is that helpful in the slightest? Like you're, you're not going to give me some kind of result for that. Now I have to somehow figure out how to express that in some other way that isn't as specific. And I'm going to have to troll, you know, go through all of these. It's, it's maddening to me and you can do. So what I'll do is I'll just do a site search. Then I'll just go to, you know, Google or whatever, and then put the term and then site colon. And then you can, so there's a way to, to get around that idiocy, but the troll, the, the systems themselves will limit you. So when someone says search the forum, it's like, I have, and it didn't help me. And I'm here asking a question because I need a legitimate answer. So the Ubuntu form, this is another thing that happens all the time. I put in there, so GNOME software, Ubuntu software, by extension of GNOME software, when there's updates, it just says there's updates. It doesn't show you what's there. It just says updates. And it's like, well, how is that helpful? I'd like to see what I'm going to update here. No way to see you know, details or anything like that. You can just click a button. <clears throat> and so I said... I went to the forum and I posted and I said, is this expected behavior or am I doing something wrong? Cause it seems like very unusable to me. And, and then I got four different responses that had nothing to do with it. Well, if you use Kubuntu, then, you know, discover will show you. I'm like, that isn't my question. And then there was another one. Well, you can use apps, get at the command line. Yes, I understand that. My question was, is it supposed to be? So, forums are very hit and miss and sometimes you know i don't know yeah well, there's also people who are commenting who shouldn't be commenting because they don't really have they're not trying to answer the question they're just trying to do some kind of uh proselytizing for whatever they want you to use kind of thing so i actually have some advice for you eric if you go to discourse.destinationlinux.network <laughs> that is a great that's a great forum you know, I haven't seen I any agree. trolls on there myself, and you know people are very helpful there and kind, and, and you don't get the RTFM or search for it. It's true. You it's haven't a fantastic had fantastic suggestion. It's a fantastic <laughs> suggestion, except for Yannick and I haven't been posting all that much there, so there are trolls. There well, are trolls. Troll. There are there are trolls who troll the people who run the forums versus the people who are on the forums. <laughs> true. <laughs> So, but uh, I was actually going to say that's a great thing because someone said, uh, Mitchell in the uh, chat was like, what forms do you guys use? And I was like, well, as soon as I can, I'm going to say that this one. I was like, nope, Nate did it for me. Perfect. <laughs> and to be fair, it does sound self-serving, but honestly, there are some really great conversations there. And when I've had legitimate questions or, or asking for feedback, like there are thoughtful answers. Like I don't get any of that. You know, oh, I got to get my bean count up, so I'm going to post another 50 spam posts today. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, there there are achievements and badges you can get, but some of them are so insane that no one's going to ever get them. Like, so dumb. Is that yeah. a challenge? No, no, I'm serious. There's one badge, and this is that I didn't create these badges and stuff. These are automatic things that are available from Discourse, and one of them is to literally go to the forum every day and it posts and post one comment for an entire year. 
Oh, brother. Like, that is so ridiculous that I won't even ever get that. <laughs> no, because inevitably you're going to have to post something that isn't of any real quality or yeah. interest to anyone. You're just doing it to to because it's a game, right? It's that whole gamification yeah. thing. Well, it's also because it's and it's also such a gigantic task that people won't spam it to get it right because they right. still have to come back every day in order to do it. So you you can't spam in order to get it. So oh, it, it is it is ridiculous, but also at the same time, it's interesting that they even have that as the as a, a thing. You know, is but that a I challenge? I <laughs> if you want it to be <laughs> sure. <laughs> I mean, I don't even accept that challenge. That's <laughs> I'm going to leave that one for the bigger troll of Yannick. <laughs> <laughs> like, I tried to see how far I could go every day. And I was like, nope, I can't do it every day. It's just too much. Well, you just said that you have to leave one comment every day. You didn't say where. Yeah, it doesn't matter where. Just you have to reply to someone or post a new thread every day, once a day for a year. And I and after I think three weeks, I was like, all right, I'm good. <laughs> well, and if there's nothing I mean, sometimes there's a lot to talk about, or there's a really interesting post, or I mean, yeah, that's just kind of how it goes. And some days there just isn't. And I mean, you hope that there's enough people that, you know, they are coming up against stuff and uh and it's neat because, and the nice thing about the the DLN discourse is number one, it's discourse because discourse is the best forum software in my opinion, hands down. Yeah. And secondly, it uh, you know there's enough categories. It's broken down well. I've seen posts, you know, help desk posts like this isn't working. How do I fix this? Like um, there was a guy, um, Mr. McBride. He had an issue with uh, or no Baltimore. He had an issue with Manjaro updates. He, um, something had gotten out of sync with a mirror that he was using. And so he couldn't, he'd run the, he'd try to run the updates and then it would say that the packages were corrupt and then it, but it wouldn't help him. It wasn't showing him how to fix it. And so I went and just looked on the Manjaro forum cause he hadn't thought to do that. Speaking of an excellent forum, Manjaro forums, which is my, was my inspiration for using discourse in the first place on, on Biddle. But, um, you know, and I found an answer and I brought it back here and posted it and then that helped him. And I mean, so that kind of interaction, that's why I love forums. And now anyone can come and find this and use it versus, mm -hmm. you know, I know people love Telegram and the immediacy of that, but I just, I can't, I can't keep up with it. Yeah, I think yeah, forums Telegram's are better. Great, but well, for help, for sure. Like yeah. when... Like, for example, when Dan Kelly said uh, and he was having issues with Kubuntu, it's like, well, Telegram has a specific support group that uh, we're not Telegram, but Kubuntu has a Telegram group that's just for support. And they have other groups that are for conversation. So if you want to go to the support when you can do that, I think that that's a, a one option. But the ones that are catch all, you really can't do support in those. Uh, so when someone asks a question to DL, uh, I typically request them to put a forum thread because it's way easier to keep up to keep track of that. And it also just gets rid of the clutter because you don't really like having, unless their question is really small that I can quickly answer in one response, then it's fine. But if they start, you know, if they have like a big list of things that are issues, it needs to be in a, some, in a more, um, well-organized structure like a forum and also I, th I do think that it's it's beneficial to have forums for particular projects i think every project should have their own forum in some way or some way to communicate and get requests and stuff um but i also think that destination linux uh, forum is the best forum uh but um not because i started it but because it's just is, but also mainly it's because it's like because the community is so um, friendly and so open and doesn't really care about the uh, experience level and stuff like that of people there. It's you don't have to worry about oh um, I'm a noob, so I have to warn these people that I'm a noob. It doesn't matter. Like it's just like whatever you have an issue with, we're gonna help you. 
I love that it's a mix of, of everybody, right? And that's what's cool about it because you get that. Some people are like, I've seen a bunch of posts like, uh, I'm brand new to Linux and I just happen to find destination Linux or something else. And, yeah. um, you know, I'm here I am, I'm trying this out and, you know, either I'm having problems or I'm not, or, and I love seeing those stories and that, and it, people aren't intimidated to come and, and share them. And I mean, that's one of the things like when you were talking about the DL- destination Linux network as, as some of the ideals of it, that's why I was so excited because it's like, this is exactly how I want to, you know, what I see in the community. And I'd like to get that to bubble up a little more and have yeah. more experienced people interacting with these newer people who can benefit from that knowledge. And that's the thing that, it, so you have so many people that say, Oh, I don't know anything. Well, look, you run Linux on your desktop and you do all of your normal computing on Linux. And, you know, you may not be a sysadmin, you may not be a developer, but you're using the system and you've, you've, you're, you're doing things that you don't even realize are, you know, to a complete novice that are, to them, it seems like advanced. And so it's like Zeb, when Zeb says all the time, oh, I'm just a user. I'm like, yeah, right, Zeb. Yeah. You're just a user. Like you have three monitors and you've got, you installed Gentoo, like you've done all these things. Like you're not just a user, man. You're, you're well beyond that at this point um but you know and that's okay he can he can feel as though he doesn't have that because there's always someone smarter than you i mean always it's just the way the world works so but it's that's what's so cool to me is that you just have this sort of homogenized mix of people that are like doing it as a job and then people that are um you know just doing it as a hobby or just getting started so yeah it's good stuff But actually, so I, I had some computer stuff to donate to the local computer user group. And um, so I went there and it's like, I've looked at their website. I've looked at going to some of their stuff and they, it's all, it's, it's mostly old people cause it's Florida. And I don't mean that in like a derogatory way. It's just people who are there. It's like, how do I use word? You know, it's, it's not about like, how do I get the most out of a computer or how do I customize it? So they don't have anything with Linux or open source or any of that kind of stuff. It's all just, you know, conventional computer stuff. So when I went there, I'm like, Hey, like uh, I'm into Linux. It's, it's just my thing. And do, does anyone use Linux? Is it something you've ever thought about talking about? Cause they, they'll do uh, presentations at their meetings and stuff. It's kind of like a lug, but not Linux, you know, I guess. Yeah. It's a computer lug. Yeah. It's a, it's a, Cug. <laughs> Cug. Yeah, that's just weird. That's weird to say. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, I just said like, you know, I do a podcast and I like, you know, I'm, I, I'm into this. And so if it's something you're ever interested in, like, I'd be happy to, to do a talk or just to get people to understand that it's out there and it's an option. And, and the guy was like, yeah, that's, that's cool. You know, would you be interested in coming to one of the, the meetings and doing a presentation? So um, I was curious to see if they take me up on it, but I just thought that's neat. You know, it's a, yeah, it's a way to cool. reach out. I mean, that's definitely a good idea going to places that, you know, are not necessarily focused on Linux and offering to talk about Linux and stuff. When I said to him, like, you know, I'm, I'm part of this virtual user group and a lot of our members are, you know, retirement age or, you know, they're hobbyists. They're people that just enjoy technology. And so I have to assume that there are, at least some portion of your group that use computers because they find it enjoyable and would like to know that this is out there. And they're like, yeah, it's, it's a good idea. He was surprised that we had so many people, you know, but you know, there's another statistic I didn't know was how big the market for gaming is for like uh retirement age and, and up and some of the streamers that are out there and stuff like that. I, there's a lot. It's very surprising. I had no many. idea. Yeah. And they also they also stream all kinds of different things. There's like board game streamers. There's video game streamers. There's all kinds of stuff. There's also uh, Dungeons and Dragons streamers of all ages. Yeah, there yeah, was actually cool. there. This is hilarious. Like Dungeons and Dragons is one of those games that you would not expect to be that interesting without being a part of it. But there are a lot of streamers and YouTube channels and stuff that are devoted to doing like campaigns and stuff. 
and they're typically pretty fun. It depends on the person, whoever is the DM, of course, because you can't have a boring DM and it'd be watchable. But um, there was this guy who posted on Twitter and he posted a, a, a photo of himself like he's like he's like a bodybuilder dude and he posts a photo of himself like in front of like a mirror with like his his shirt off and it says i don't play D." and then within like i don't know an hour there were hundreds of responses of people who were just as buff with photo of with things saying i do and i play D D. <laughs> yeah. And then at one point, this uh, this guy who's an actor posted a photo of himself uh, from on the cover of Men's Health magazine and says, "I play D and D." And it's just like, it's just <laughs> like right in that dude's face over and over. It's like, yeah, you shouldn't post that stuff. <laughs> That's funny. I forgot who the guy, what the guy's name was, but it was just, it was hilarious because it just it just shut him up immediately. <laughs> so Vince was joking around, but he said. Uh, really gramps and actually one of the streamers that surprised me is there's like a she's in her 80s maybe and she's on twitch and she's hugely popular and she plays um i don't know if it's like minecraft or like just some random game that she's into people love it mm -hmm. you know and it's, i don't think she does it to i don't think she monetizes it or anything i think she's just doing it because she enjoys it but like that's really cool you know yeah I agree. I mean, I think that there's actually a market for people who are, you know, the like the anti-stereotype. So like someone who doesn't look remotely like they would do something mm -hmm. and them doing that. So like um, there's a lot of D&D &D stuff that have people who don't look like they'd be D&D &D or uh, gamers, game streamers who are like in their 60s and 70s and stuff like that. And those are really interesting because there's like, um, there's a cut, there was a guy I was watching. He was like 65 or something and he was playing uh, guitar hero on stream. And I was like, I don't know why I'm watching this, but I'm watching this. <laughs> you know, I, I remember as a kid, so I had a Sega master system and one of the games on there was road rash and it was a, mo a motorcycle game. Yeah. I love road rash. And, uh, it's just fun. It was dumb, right? I mean, it was like yep. real basic, you know, but I remember my parents had it. It was in the living room and my parents and their friends one night playing that game and laughing themselves to tears <laughs> and having the best time I've ever seen like eight adults have playing a video game. And it was fantastic. Like, That's I, awesome. it was like, it brought me such joy to see them enjoy something that I enjoy yeah you know. absolutely it, that's that has to be what it is yeah like yeah just to see someone like playing something that you that they that, that you think that they wouldn't understand or appreciate and then actually appreciating it yeah. right i mean and they were terrible and they were laughing because they kept crashing into trees and cars and stuff of but course was, you know yeah. but it was it was just they but, were enjoying the game you know and it was that's yes. what was so cool I also like the fact that there's even times where you could play, even if you're good at games, you play these games and then they're like, you're just bad at them because you've never played them before. And then they're enjoyable because they're so, it's so bad. You're so bad at it. that it's you laugh about how bad it is. Yeah. Like when, when I'm playing um, any kind of uh, shooter game, I'm like, here's the thing, the thing about that. No, I'm actually amazing at that because I have a sword and I don't have to shoot. But, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but there are I, uh, i'm terrible yeah i just use the sword almost 90 percent of the time but i mean i actually have like there's there's like different classes and the more you play the more you level up i have some of those classes at like 10 15 20 and i think my my ninja character has like 57 level or something i don't know <laughs> uh so the the, the, the are any of these shooter games i start playing like when i used to play i used to be a console only player and i was good at shooter games on the controller and then i moved to pc and i realized how awful i am at shooters like it is hilariously bad because i was like playing this guy and he's like yeah i've played this game for about maybe a few hours a few hundred hours like 
okay? And then he just destroyed me with every second. Like, I spawn, I'm dead. I'm spawn, I'm dead. Like, I didn't... I played um, Zanotic with some people, and I got two, three kills, and it was like... I was ecstatic because I got three kills in a row. And that was it. <laughs> then I didn't get any more for the rest of the session. I was like, it's fine. I got three in a row. We're good. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, and it's, and I know it's cliche now too, but like my grandma is in her late eighties. They do Wii bowling and like all that goofy stuff. And, and the Wii, because of the way those controllers worked and, and like that was so accessible mm-hmm. to anyone. And, uh, you know, just to see them have a good time and it's, it's also movement, you know, they're up and they're moving around and stuff like that. So, I mean, video games definitely have a place. It's, it's just, you know, you're right. I mean, not a lot of people are into like hardcore. I mean, I guess people are, but I mean, it's, I'm a filthy casual when it comes to gaming. Like I just, I don't care enough, you know? Oh yeah. Some, uh, some games I play because they're frustrating. Like yeah. I, Rocket League is a game that is incredibly frustrating, and I love the skill required to do it. Like because when it happens, when it comes together, ridiculous it's ridiculous. It is. It's yeah, worth, there's a reward for it. Nate, right. are you trying to you trying to cut out bedtime? No, no. I was just looking at something else. Um, oh. I was going to say, I think the Wii was the pinnacle of gaming consoles, and I don't think we're I don't and I think we're far from that now. But it was just all the games are very easy to pick up and play and yep. they were fun. And, and like this, there's still one that I, I still play with my kids. It's, um, it's, a, it's like this tennis sword fight thing. No, it's a oh, sword nice. fight one. It's just like yeah. the crap out of each other, like to fall off this, this pad. I can't remember. It's like Wii sports or something like that. Sports something. Yeah. And, Wii sports has a and, bunch of those. And it's just, it is so much fun to play that game. And every time I play it, I laugh. And I think that, mm-hmm. I got to get the Wii Mote to actually work in Linux, and it should. It's just infrared. You, know. you just have the sensor. You should yeah, work. I just have to have the sensor. Yeah, but it's just yeah. so much fun. The, the Wii, the I think the Wii just brought so much. You know. Yeah, uh, it was innovative, but gaming. Yeah, it was innovative and it got people who would never try gaming into gaming. Right. There's actually something that was a, a video I saw. It was probably a, a month ago or so, something like that, and it was what non-gamers think about gaming and it was and i thought it was be some kind of like essay or something or whatever but the actual video was someone who's a gamer who's not like a professional or nothing just just does games but also is like a filmographer who does like documentaries and stuff and decided to get his wife to play various different games of different like styles like platformers first person shooters and like it had doom shovel knight uh, even had um, Skyrim and Dark Souls because he's evil. And uh, he had all these different games. And his rule was, I will not tell her anything. Because I'm not, you're, I want to see how games are for someone who is just now trying out games for a certain amount of time. And I will not give any tips whatsoever. So if they get stuck on anything, they just get stuck and we'll see if they can figure it out or whatever. And he, in, in the process of this video, he realized something that I never thought about either. Like, it totally makes sense that there is actually a language of games that if you play games, you inherently know certain things before you even play the game. Like, if you play a game, like even Rocket League still abides by some of these consistent languages in the sense that A is jump. And it's the same. Or if you're in a race car game, the right trigger is always gas. And the left trigger is always brake or reverse. Always. Mm. And I mm-hmm. never thought about it until he was going through these tests. And she was like, how do I do all these things? He was like, well, I didn't, I don't, I didn't look it up. It's just this. And then she was like, how do you know that? It's like, how, yeah, how do we yeah. know this? And it's like yep. it's just brain, like entrenched into our our psyche in terms of like all these different games. And it was really interesting to see their her perspective of these games, especially with Dark Souls, because that was just evil. Um, but yeah, well, and that's just like any shooter. I mean, WASD, like on a on a PC at least, you know, space for jump and 
you know, shift for crouch. And I mean, you have certain set expectations of how that keyboard layout works. And when people deviate from it, it it's like, what happened? Like, I, I you're completely lost. So that muscle memory of how, you know, how you interact with the game. Um, yeah, that's an interesting, interesting point. And I wonder, I have to assume at least some companies do do some kind of testing around that, right? To I, I think know. some of it was just adopted. Like it just became a thing. Like I, I think some of them weren't even intended. Like people, a lot of the times were like game developers will just choose to use a for jump because it's always been a for jump. So why change it? Mm -hmm. And, and if you look back about why it was a for jump, it goes back to like super Mario or Mario mm -hmm. Brothers, like the original, so you jump with A, and it just they just happen to keep using it. And then when A became in the position of the bottom of the the uh, quad triangle thing, whatever you want to call that shape, um, that was as also X in PlayStation or something. I don't remember. Whatever, whatever that position there is, mm -hmm. it's always the same button. Mm -hmm. Yep. I accept on that particular controller, it's not the same button. It's B on your controller, but it's always the lower button well, now. The, the Nintendo, Nintendo st stuck with the B on the bottom because it's the way, basically the way the Super Nintendo set it up. They've kind of stuck with that. Oh, so they flipped it from the Nintendo to the Super Nintendo. I do no, remember that no, now. Be, well, the, the B is sure. still there. I mean, like the regular Nintendo controller was just like the two buttons on the side. I think A was on the left. Well, you know, I have one of those here too. Of course you do. You should check it. <laughs> But like, yeah, so you always have like you, typically the A on the bottom. But even if the A is not on the bottom, it's always the bottom button that jumps now. No matter what the button is. So I can't tell. Do you have a link to the video? Um, a, you guys... B. Oh, okay. Well, that's just a broken controller then. Well, it's the original Nintendo. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying because I was wrong. It must be because the controller was wrong, <laughs> not me. Um, All I remember I, is up, down, up, down, left, right, left, right, A, B, A, B, A. Uh, select start. Select start. <laughs> yep. That is the... That Contra, is right? Contra code, but technically the there is code. some... It's the Konami code because the Konami code was first and then the Contra code popularized it. Okay. And it became known as the Contra code because the game Contra was way more popular than the Konami structure. And it was just, and there's also a lot of uh, debate on which, what is it called? Is it Contra or Konami? Like, <laughs> it's like, what? whatever. Hmm. Uh oh. I'll get the link to that video. Oh, you know what it is? I'm sorry, guys. It's because I minimize Zoom. And if you minimize Zoom, the video freezes. Of course. Of course uh, it does. Yeah. Yeah, of course it does. Zoom. Uh, um, so I have a completely unrelated thing. My daughter's school sent out this email about internet characters, safety, and wellness. Have you heard of this Momo thing, the Momo challenge? It's like some kind of weird. Yeah. I know um, a Momo from Last Airbender. <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's this thing from, uh, I guess there was a new ring movie not long ago do you remember that ring the, the yeah, yeah from tv the tv scrambling thing so this is a total snopes thing like the, the parents are all freaking out because supposedly the challenge is that you know it's like they oh, sent yeah, yeah yeah they said you know kid will get it and then it's like you know hurt yourself or do something bad and like um yeah like the evil weird looking like it's so cartoon it woman looks like, face thing but it looks like something from beetlejuice it's really yeah. cheesy yeah it's very bad and it's, it's not it's scary totally but i guess if for a little kid either. i yeah right exactly so my school sent out all these emails and I'm, i looked it up and i'm like here it's we a go again thing it's all it is it's a 4chan thing yeah. i mean it actually started on 4chan and then they just kind of popularized it like there's so many things that people act like are a thing that it's really just 4chan trying to troll people and are very successful in but the yes, tide pod are. challenge that wasn't really a thing until people started saying it was a thing and then people started doing it like it wasn't actually a thing and they're like yep 
we're going to keep doing it now. It's like, okay. Yeah. I just, anyway, so <laughs> I, I was tempted to write back and just be like, guys, please just stop. You're making it, you know, you're making it worse. If anything. <laughs> yeah. And also most of the people you're sending it to have never heard of it until now. So. <laughs> right. Right. Now they will. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I just thought that was a silly reminded me of my years ago when people would send me emails about, Oh, I got this, you know, it says, don't click this thing. Or, you know, it was all these Snopes basically, you know, mm -hmm. hoaxes. All that's no, all that stuff still happens. It's just on Facebook now. Yeah, that's true. Like right. I have a Instead lot of, of people email chains. Me stuff. <laughs> yes. It is just Facebook threads. You got to share this on your, th uh, your thing. Otherwise blah, blah, blah. it's like, it's a chain letter. And Facebook, like, how right. is this still being done? Like, what is this? It just it, this will it, give you luck if you posted it. But <laughs> yeah, yep. It just never, what never. Yeah, it, it, in every new medium, there will just be another, another stacking of it, right? Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Like, how could this concept of chain letters from decades ago? still just keep happening on whatever platform happens to be popular now. Well, and, like, and it's, it's called a chain letter because it used to literally be postal mail. You would get a letter yeah. in the mail. I actually got one when I was younger and it was, <laughs> it was definitely this, send this letter to 10 people and you'll have like good luck. And I was like, what is this? But yeah. And then it started, <laughs> and then it was email, email because then yeah. was, you know, and I guess now it's just something else. So I always yeah. liked the fact that they call it chain letters and not chain mail because chain mail would be more fun. <laughs> <laughs> it would yes. be. Yeah. Let's officially like, hey, send you a chain mail to that. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's the, we don't ever send them anymore. And it's uh, still it's just change book now, uh, or change face. <laughs> <laughs> my face the, or, or Facebook? Yeah. Did you, did you see Facebook, their yeah. their uh, my my face? <laughs> their Librem. <laughs> did you see their Librem currency pretty much fell apart? Oh yeah, yeah. With well, almost instantly, and there are people who were telling me they were like, "I'm going to put money into that." I was like, "You're going to lose it." <laughs> yeah, it's like it's Facebook, and they're claiming to be decentralized. Right. Like they don't understand what that word means. Yeah, they want to subvert the world's currency systems. That sounds like a great idea. Yeah, <laughs> sign me up. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, uh, but there's there's times where I'll be on Facebook and I'll get people send me messages. And they're like, oh, I can't believe this is true. And then I'll look at it and go, that's because it's not. Yeah. It's like yeah. you can like, and, and the one last time someone sent me, I was like, this one person sent me like four or five, like once a week or something. Not that many once a week, but just over the course of a few weeks. And then I'll uh, respond. And I was like, this is not real, blah, blah. And then I was like, okay, I'm no longer going to do the work for you. Here is Snopes. Here is Google. Here and I gave him like a list of all these other like um, like debunker things. Just search these and stop it. <laughs> it's like you're like it, I, I can't I can't spoon feed you anymore because it's just if you're gonna I don't know it's just like I don't understand how some people can believe them so overtly like they're not even not even taking consideration. Well, that's that whole friend, right? I mean, if, if it's someone you think you know or trust and they believe it, then you're more inclined to believe it yourself, I guess. Yeah, that's true. I mean, there's just times where I'll see something that's so absurd that it's like, why? Like, there was this one someone sent me is like, I can't believe millennials are doing this. Like, what? And it was millennials were ruining beer. I'm like, why, why is that a, what are they talking about? And the idea was that because millennials don't drink beer, they prefer like some kind of alcohol form or something that they're ruining the beer industry. <laughs> I was like, what is this? What kind of stupid article is this? <laughs> Reminds me of all those like spammy articles you see at the bottom of, uh, I don't know what network that is, but certain sites where you see like, you'll never believe this miracle, you know, and they're all just like that, you know? Yeah. The Buzzfeed effect. Is it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But there, and it's funny because there's like times where you'll see some of these, some of them, I'll look at these articles and then I see the headline. I was like, 
I want to click this and I will not on principle. <laughs> it's like yeah. the clickbait is working, but I refuse. Yeah, Vince uh, says he's happier since he quit Facebook, but he keeps it for family. Same thing. I mean, I now I do use Facebook for my uh, Linux stuff because I figure there's an audience out there. And, if, and there are actually a lot of Linux uh, user groups, groups on Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of it's just the same garbage you see everywhere else. Not trying to be offensive, but like, but there is there are some good groups and good conversations. A lot of the lugs are on there. Um, so I, I have the LN extend stuff on there. I mean, yeah, you know, it's not my preferred. Yeah. I mean, it's just, that's where people are. I mean, I, I'm not going to get them to leave Facebook to come to somewhere else. So. Speaking of which, I need you to send me the messages when you post them. I'll reshare them on the DL one. Um, but there's, I, uh, no, no, no. You have to let me know that you posted it because I don't pay attention to Facebook unless I'm going on there yeah. to pair stuff. <laughs> Fair enough. Like I also don't use Facebook except for well, stuff like that. <laughs> and what Facebook considers a notification is so broad and like ridiculous. Like mm -hmm. I, I'll go in there. There'll be 10 new notifications that have nothing at all to do. I mean, yeah, it's from some group I'm in, but it doesn't, it's nothing. I'm going to go to Facebook right now just to tell you how many notifications I have because 59 well, luckily for and, you, you're using Firefox Facebook container, which, yes. you know, blocks all I, that. So the people that comp that's are like, well, how could you use Facebook? Right. You, well, you take the precaution and you put the Facebook container on Firefox and you get on with your life. Like, because Facebook container, even if you're on another website, like, um, where was I? Any random website where even if there's a Facebook share button, it will Facebook still block container it. Yeah. will block it. So, yep. Anywhere you are, even if you're not on Facebook, you ha you should have Facebook containers installed in Firefox. Yeah. Period. Even if you don't use Facebook, you should still have that con that add on. Yep. yep. And I don't think it. that add on requires multi account containers, even though it is mm -mm. built for it. I think they separate it for that purpose. Yeah. You don't you don't need the underpinning. No, you don't need the because the it would it might be some p piece of it, but it's not the whole UI like add on part of it. Yeah. So like they take into consideration, like not everybody wants to have that, but everybody can benefit from the Facebook thing. Yeah. And absolutely. it is, it is fantastic. Cause as soon as you go to Facebook, no matter what container you're in, it will automatically move you into the actual Facebook one. And yeah. there's no overlap. And there are times where I'm going to a, a website and I'm like, Hey, what's that button? Oh, right. Facebook got blocked. Good. Mm -hmm. What's that little fence thing? Oh yeah. Yeah. And it's also great because there's times where I'll have, um, the fence show up randomly in the corner somewhere because it was just a hidden, like uh, a one pixel HTML tag or something. And they had it in like the pixel uh, codes there. And it'll tell, it'll just show you that, that icon randomly in a, one of the corners and say, Hey, there's nothing to show you here physically on the page, but just so you know, we blocked mm -hmm. this. It's like, Mitchell's, yes. Mich Mitchell's question about um, he's never used Facebook when I benefit. So, well, I used Facebook a lot for a long time just because, you know, I didn't really think about it or know better. And the one thing I missed when I stopped using it regularly was a lot of the groups, especially with like web design, web de dev kind of stuff. There's a lot of really good people on Facebook and I had a lot of good conversations and contacts. Um, so it the people on Facebook are, you can find good people groups of people even though facebook groups are garbage and their threading is terrible and their posting is terrible but you can't mm -hmm. search and find anything i mean it, it's just bad all the way around more people who like, get in the more chaos there is yeah it's just it's horrendous um but um but they're the people are there and that's the thing you know it's just the most widely used platform you have the, the largest audience you have the largest potential of finding quality people to interact with on whatever subject you know, whatever that happens to be any hobby or profession or, yeah, I mean, yep. I, I, I learned so much about just, you know, web dev stuff, web design, WordPress, like, um, tons of that for years I was in those groups and it was a big, it, it, I felt it when I stopped participating. Like it was, a, cause I, I knew all the news. I had all of the updates. I'd see when people were having problems, you know, it was just really handy to have all that information and, Unfortunately, Facebook being 
you know, the way they are, it's, you have, it's a trade-off. But like I said, if you're using face or uh, Firefox and you're containing Facebook, so it can't do the garbage that, it, you know, evil things that they want to do, then you don't ever install it on your phone ever. Yeah. Never. Cause also never. you might not be able to get rid of it. Right. Because if it's on your phone, you have like, yes, it'll tell you permissions and technically of like stuff it's trying to do. Once you grant any kind of permissions to that application, they'll track your location. Anytime you post, anytime log like, phone calls, they were caught doing that. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it's absolute spyware garbage on a mobile device, but if you can contain it in a browser like Firefox, where it literally can't get out of that, um, then it, it is what it is, right? You know what you're getting into. And so. And also basically the only way to use Facebook on a desktop is because of the Firefox Facebook container. Like that's really the only, like if you use any other browser, you don't have that separation thing. So you're just nope. stuck. I mean, with technically, you, could, you know, you could do something like in Chrome and have a profile. If you were diligent and only ever use that profile, but Facebook's, cookies even if like you were saying on those sites and stuff right you they visit you regardless site, yeah they're fingerprinting you. you you may never even go to facebook.com but they own so many different services and they have tracking on so many different websites any of those share buttons any of that kind of stuff that's in there will mm -hmm. you know they also will, do the the facebook pixel now is basically google analytics for facebook mm-hmm so like there's a lot of websites that have that like almost every pl platform has some kind of plugin for the Facebook pixel. So like there's, it's just, it's as in invasive as Google's uh, analytics stuff is and Google's just in general. So like the reason, and also just another tip is that uh, you can do the same thing with uh, Google tools. You can have a Google container there are specific containers for all kinds of different services where you can separate them and to have a spec like to, so that they automatically go to that depending on, you know, it uses one container for everything sort of thing. Well, the Facebook con or the uh, Firefox containers in general, I think it takes a little bit of work to are the set best it up. Extent, the best feature of any browser ever. Period. Absolutely. If you take any kind of like tracking and security seriously, like I use it specifically to separate work stuff from personal stuff i have a banking one i have a shopping one and amazon anything amazon only comes up in that shopping and only anything so i use all these services google services and stuff like that but they're in their own container and they can't mm -hmm. get out of that container so and you can also lock domains to specific mm -hmm. yep i have that set up and then i have cookie auto delete which will delete all those cookies automatically um I think my favorite part about the container system is uh, having multiple sites, the one site logged in on multiple accounts all at the same time and never have to worry about logging out, logging back in and all, repeat yep. and whatever. Like, I love that. Like I have um, a lot of different social networks logged in. I have, a, I have different containers for purposes and I also have different containers for entities. So like, DL has its own container. Tux Digital has its own container. I have a personal container for a, actually a bunch of personal containers. Then I have like a no container and I use the no container to do things that I don't want associated to anything, but I know there's still going to be some kind of tracking to it. You know, like right. uh, if you use no container on and not logged in on YouTube, it'll still track you and give you recommendations based on your cookies and stuff. So, well, and they're going to, they, they're, they can log your IP address. I mean, yeah, there's definitely too. ways they can fingerprint the browser. There's different ways that, I mean, that, that's their business. They're very good at tracking. I mean, it's, yeah, it, they've I mean, perfected it's true. it. I was just thinking in the sense of like, um, with YouTube, I have a container for DL and Tux Digital. So when I want to go to YouTube and use, uh, like for example, I'm on this stream with the Tux Digital account, so I can comment as Tux Digital. But I could also just open it in another container and comment as DL immediately. Right. And it, like you know that that's such a convenient thing. And also, there are some things like, uh, do, do you guys use Diaspora? I don't. Yeah, it's Never a have. social network that 
sort of tries to be Facebook in a decentralized way that's really odd. Yeah, um, yeah. I've looked at it, but I just never really jumped on. Yeah. Well, the thing about it is that there are no clients of any sort. There are no mobile apps. There are no desktop apps. It's just the service. And you have to join a pod system. And the pod systems are really annoying uh, because the, some of the pods are federated, some are not. So you have no idea if the pod you join is federated. So I found one that was reasonably active and fairly large called diaspora.org. So it's like diaspora, but they put they took the A and put it into a G, basically. And uh, it's quite good, but the thing that annoys me the most about it is that it will constantly log you out unless you're using a full-blown uh, browser. So if you use like some kind of other solution like Electron or whatever, it will still it will always fail. It will always log you out. But if you use Firefox, it works solid. And having the containers for it makes Diaspora the like the first time I ever could use it consistently. Now, if it wasn't an open source decentralized social network, I would never use this because it's not very good. <laughs> but because it is, I'm giving it a shot. That's how I feel about um, Mastodon, frankly. Yes. It's kind of like, um, you know, I like it. I actually think it's a decent system, but it's there's such a small number of people on there. Um, and it, it's got a different feel. Like Twitter, I feel like it's all about you. Like you just, your thoughts, you know, whatever you want to put out. I mean, to, to a certain degree, but um, I feel like on Mastodon, there's an expectation of being very careful about not being like spammy or over self-promoting and I don't know why, but I just kind of, yeah, I hesitate. I don't understand that idea whatsoever. <laughs> well, but I just, I understand. Um, I don't know. I just have this, this sense, but anyway, or right, Nate, you taking off. I, I think I'm, I'm going to. Yeah, cut. same. We're, we're like three hours. Okay. <clears throat> well, I'll hang out. I'll hang out to the, the, the end of this race here. You've oh. made it. You've made, you made it to the end. So anyway, thanks everyone. That's uh, still hanging on. Made it to uh, three hours and six minutes. I think that we'll call that a call that a night. Yeah, it's a that's uh, a half tux digital stream. You get to join me on <laughs> you're gonna join me on one of my streams. We're gonna go the whole like nine hour gambit. I'll do it, man. Bring it. <laughs> Let's do it. I mean, I mean, need a couple uh, stretch breaks, but uh, <laughs> you know, that's fine. I, I've run a couple of half marathons. But I, I don't know if I can do a Tux digital stream. That, that's, that's probably more than I can. <laughs> I've run before. <laughs> I need to do like that. when it rains, you know, sometimes. <laughs> yeah. I was I was talking to somebody that was like in the, one of the, the DL groups or something. And someone said something about it was cold. It was too cold to go like go outside or whatever. And I was like, yeah, it's... It, I mean, it's, it's so annoying. I could go run, you know, outside, but it's so cold that I don't want to do it. And I've missed, I missed yesterday too. And the previous 600 days before that. So, oh, just ah. missed so many. <laughs> I wouldn't say I've been missing running, Bob. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I wouldn't say I've been missing it. Yeah. Uh, Actually, you know, it's funny. I do miss running. I enjoyed it quite a lot. Uh, I ran close to 10 years. I was pretty good at it. And, uh, but I could see that if I continued doing it for too long, it would probably take its toll because there were definitely, like I had some back issues and some things going on. You have to be, if you're going to be a runner, you have to be pretty, pretty diligent about like stretching and doing yeah. certain exercises mm -hmm. to make sure your hips are, I mean, it's, you put, if you're going to pound your body like that, you got to, you know, do the work to, yeah. I, I do There's the actually, minimalist shoe the the vibram five finger shoe so I, do you really i realized yeah. oh yeah I, I i know they look ridiculous but um, i think they're hilarious since, and i love them <laughs> but since i transitioned to them about nine years ago i don't have hip or knee or ankle pain at all anymore so yeah. you wear those all the time or just when running i used to wear them more often but um i kind of went to the converse all-star look instead because they're, they're kind of they're pretty minimal 
you know yeah. but uh but they're, they're a little they don't they don't get the eyeballs on you as much you know yeah i saw i saw a, a recent youtube series of different videos they it's not a trend because it's you know it's a thing that's been around for a long time but you know the whole ten thousand steps thing someone did like a testing of like what happens if you do ten thousand steps a day for a month and then the guy did it and was like well, it's way easier just to walk around rather than run and I'm never getting tired. So it's always, you know, it's, it's nice. I like, I like going out walking. He's like, so I was only going to do this for a month and this is like month three now and I'm doing it every day. And it's like, I, this is part of my thing now, I guess. I was like, well, that's interesting. Cause he's like, at some point he's like, and also if you ever like have like a moment where you have like a fog in your head or something, if you just don't, you just want to take a break. He's like, just go walk for five minutes and, it it changes completely. It's like a weird meditation thing. Hmm. Yeah, Vince like says God. Vince says he's a swimmer. It's funny. I've I've tried to exercise with swimming, and I always just get this. It's like swimming's Birds always been. Play. Yeah, it's been like a uh, <laughs> you know, it's never been. I've never seen it as exercise, so it's hard for me to like yeah, take same. it seriously like that. Yep. But. Uh, there is definitely something to that isolation, you know, when you're just like whoosh, you know, you don't, there, there's no real sensory input other than just your momentum. And so I get it. And also swimming underwater gives you like this weird, you're in a different world type thing. Yeah. Yeah, totally. So anyway. All right. I think we're going to cut it here, folks. Thanks everybody for joining in. I appreciate it. This was a lot of fun. A lot of laughing. My face is faces i can feel that i was laughing and yeah smiling a lot so exactly it doesn't hurt it feels good i like it oh yeah that good workout for your face yeah exactly. it's a good pain it's a good pain exactly exactly <laughs> so all right guys take care i'll do this again soon and we'll see if we can break the three hour and 11 minute mark next time challenge accepted <laughs> why not see us. all right guys take care good night